It's the Opie and Anthony show. You know that by now. Uh, very busy show. We got Bill Burr in studio right now. Well, On the Bill way, though, Colin out. Quinn. The only reason Colin's... Not the only reason. We haven't seen Colin in a while. But we saw uh, Scorch's TV show recently. Oh. What what is it called? PFG. Yep. Oh, PFG fuck. TV. PFG Dude, we TV. We gotta play some for uh, Colin. That's exactly what we're doing for Colin Thank today. God. And do, did we find a good episode of PFG? We want to do something different. I, I watched some last night. Yes. We could play pretty much any clip, and it's going to be terrible. But I I, I have some ready for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the way, just throw a dart at it. By the way, you just heard Danny on the Opie and Anthony show. <laughs> yes. People are helping out the show, telling us what we need to do. There that it was is. Danny. The strange oh. voice you just heard was Danny. He's on the beatbox for the Opie and Anthony show. There, there it is now. Um, the um, Drudge uh, Drudge Report. Yes. Uh, dot com. They had the uh, picture of Air Force One and saying what a, a big to do it was. Well, they've changed their uh, picture and their uh, headline. It is now first. Dead. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know where you're going. Hold on. Might have something. Pretty much it. <laughs> I'm not going there. I just arrived. No, 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 you didn't. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Hold on. That was the voice of Bill Burr. Who hold just on. came into yes. the studio. Jim Bill Norton Burr. wants to announce he will not be on Red Eye tonight Why? as they have canceled the show they because thought. of, uh, oh, but they're, they're not doing Red Eye tonight. Well, not canceled the show. It's, no, they canceled it's preempted. The well, yeah, just for tonight. Yeah. You no, made it sound like, you know. Oh, no. I what? was the last guest on. Only and they for figured, tonight. Let's, you know, shut the show down. I'll be on three times next month, but only tonight. Is... Three times Jesus. next month. No, yeah, that's won't. what I do. Yes, yeah. I am. And can you give me that fact again, please? Uh, oh, the Drudge Report <laughs> has changed their headline. Uh, they have a picture of uh, people in, I swear, plastic outbreak suits, goggles, and masks. And the headline underneath in uh, bold uh, cap caps is first dead. It's a swine flu pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> that, that felt a lot like Letterman, didn't it? That is fantastic. <laughs> the first U.S. death from the swine Wait, flu what? has been confirmed. A 23-year-old child in Texas amid increasing global anxiety over health menace that authorities around the world are struggling to contain. It's a swine flu pandemic. It's an old child, too, Ant. Yes. 23-year-old child. Oh, did I say 23-year-old? Yes, <laughs> and your world that's, is, I, that's how I consider him. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go the other way. In your, world, girl. in your world, that's old age. <laughs> The world has no vaccine to prevent infection, but U.S. health officials aim to have a key ingredient for one ready in early May. It's a swine flu pandemic. You know, early May, is? it's it's like April 30th, isn't it? It's early May, pretty much right now. <laughs> what the fuck is... You know what's great about like humans and, and our government, especially when we really need to get something done, we can do it immediately. <laughs> immediately. Oh man, I I, I oh, wish yeah. they, I wish they let a few people go. The uh, wow, this though the uh -oh. number of confirmed swine flu cases in the United States rose to sixty six in six states, with forty five of those sixty six in New York. It's a swine flu pandemic. Wow, forty five out of the sixty six cases are New York, eleven in California, six in Texas, two in Kansas, and one each in Indiana and Ohio. Uh, but cities and states suspected more. In New York, the city's health commissioner said many hundreds of school children were ill at school where some students had confirmed cases. Me? You. It's a swine flu pandemic. <laughs> what are the uh, symptoms of the swine flu? Uh, just think flu. But I don't know. <laughs> Just Runny I don't nose, get the flu. aches and pains, a cough, and a fever. So you can so rest medicine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's Go all to you bed, take. watch TV. You know, you feel like shit one hour. You feel all right the next. You feel At night, you feel really shitty. And then one day, you wake up and go, hey, you know, I don't feel that bad anymore. You have the swine flu, though. There's another... It's a fucking polio. Another symptom. What? An urge to look up trannies on Craigslist. Craig, Why? Craigslist. Craig. 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 Craig.
more funny. I'm going to Craigslist. Opie gets nervous and pluralizes incorrectly. I sure do, Jimmy. I sure do. Opie has the bomb flu. The boo flu. Boo hoo flu. I um. I'm gonna, uh, I, I have the sniffles. <laughs> and I have a not, sore throat. Yeah. Um, but I do not feel achy except for the workout. You know how it is, Bill. You hit the gym. Yeah, but how do you know it's the workout? Because <laughs> I, I know where I'm sore is where I worked out. Like I did. Your I'm asshole. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I wish that were sore, but you know what happens? You get batted around enough. <laughs> no, aunt, not my asshole. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, I just my uh, my regular workout, my back. That I was doing. Well, the aches and pains won't uh, usually come until after you're pretty. I don't well have aches or pains. I have no stuffy fever? nose. No, I don't. Could be just the beginning of it. Start no, stuffy it nose, doesn't start off. Throat, and then all of a sudden you get a fever. Taking fucking a bunch of stuff. A bunch of coldies. You I got, got some it. vitamin C. I think you got it. <laughs> don't. I <laughs> don't make picky noises. <laughs> it, no. Not, not to make you more paranoid, uh, no. Anthony, but one of the schools, 30 blocks from where uh, Jimmy and I live. Oh, uh, 30 blocks. The wind blows yeah, right. Yeah, you're nervous. You thought you said 30 blacks. Like, yeah, what, so in my neighborhood? What? Huh? Where? Who? Uh, <laughs> Upper West Side, and they're in the hundreds. Some school in the hundreds. We're in well, the 70s. That's not where I go molesting, so I don't care. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Soho. Uh, well, I'm reading here that uh, <laughs> odds are Jimmy probably would get AIDS before uh, the flu. Oh, come on, subconscious. Right, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so Bill Burr's in studio and PFG. So Danny, uh, I think we might have interrupted you. You, you found a good one for PFG. Colin Quinn? Because uh, Colin Quinn's a huge fan of Scorch. And yeah. when we found this gold of uh, Scorch making a TV show at a Chinese restaurant, we said, get Colin in immediately for this. Sam linked me to a few potentials, and uh, I was watching them last night. And so you guys are going to decide which one to, to watch? Yeah, I mean, well, I think we should probably show him at least a, a little bit of the original clip that we uh, watched. I need this douchiness from Scorch. I need um, a horrible and, and very small audience. Uh, is Was there something like that? Yes, just about every uh, intro to his show has that yeah, exact yeah. scene. Yeah, very small audience that uh, went to see him. Also, um, uh, some some maudlin false sincerity toward the audience is always good. And the why we do what we do clip yeah. is on top of that. That is, yeah, yeah, that, that has to be shown. You also have to check out, he's, he's got a guy who does sports, and he really tries so very hard to be funny. And, he uh, tries so very hard. <laughs> Come over to the Pantages. Oh. Oh, visual oh, joke on the radio. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> don't, but we should don't ever say sorry it. for your visual jokes. Oh no, it's <laughs> we're the best show visual jokes based on, on right. visual humor. <laughs> we're the best at on that. the radio. We, we take uh, pride in the fact oh. that we do the best visual <laughs> jokes on radio. One of, one of my favorite parts of PFG TV uh, from yesterday was during this this gentleman's sports bit. Uh, there is just heavy, heavy background chattering going on. Oh, no to the one point where shut it's, up it's not even like you know he's not getting anything. People aren't laughing. It's just they're not even paying attention. Like the camera is on, and there's just oh no, oh, oh shit. shit! I didn't even hear what you, you know said, Danny. That I knew this was gonna happen. <laughs> Fucking, you got the swine flu. Jimmy probably has. Let me take you know something. Oh, I'm not even gonna wait. I'm not even gonna wait. We gotta go. We home. have a confirmed case of the swine flu here in the studio. I can't help it. We have first our celebrity. first. Yes, first celebrity. Yay. <laughs> swine flu victim. And it's a confirmed, I'm confirming it as uh, the swine flu. If it was the swine flu and yeah. the news did interview me, I swear to you I'd say, I got it because I'm a pig fucker. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I love to go to hog farms and, and, and deep dick <laughs> pigs the while they pigs. eat. Weren't we looking at pig pussies one day? <laughs> well, thank you. Weren't we? I don't know. I think we were. Horse pussies. But that's the best wow. opening line to a book I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to keep you turning those pages. It sure would. What pussy were we looking at where we went? You know what? It was a horse. You know what? Goats. Horse pussy. I think Danny's oh. right. Sheep. And there, I think there was no. a sheep pussy, too. There was yeah. one. Pussy, where Sheep we go? You know what? Come on. I think of course. How do, you you have to. how do you block that out after you did that? You know, <laughs> just yeah. to yourself. Hey, man, you're right. It puts a relationship in different perspective, though, when she thinks she's all high and mighty. And you know, I saw one that's just like yours, attached to a hoofed animal. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't annoying. Uh. <laughs> Was it Is that, that the horse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look, yep. look. look it's got like Bill. alien fucking. Bill, I know you don't like looking, but you got. I, I, I don't look at this. But tell stuff. me that. Just look, though. It's you could weird. stick. You could stick that. Oh my right? god, that's incredible. You're not looking. You could stick that, I, right? The what red is. That? That's a, a horse, horse vagina. <laughs> 
I thought that was Oprah. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, what the <laughs> Wow. Uh, it yeah, would I'd be hit, if she I'd, lost 80 pounds. I'd hit that. <laughs> You'd hit yeah, that. Yeah, in, a, pin, in a pinch. If you didn't know that was horse pussy, and the way this picture is framed, you don't know it's horse pussy. Last man on earth. You need something. If it, if it was an I am legend scenario, but there was a no, horse No, I would have thought that that dog. was a hermaphrodite, because that looks like a ball bag above it. Mm. In some weird way. A dented one. <laughs> Look at the horse's taint is really weird. Oh, yeah. all right, guys. Come on. It's scrotum skin. <laughs> oh, oh. God, that's got to taste horrible. <laughs> if you went down on it. probably tastes like horse pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and the worst would be, as you were licking it, the fucking horse would probably kick you in the chest. <laughs> I'm fucking kill you. You have to explain why you have fucking that gunk on your face and a hoof mark in your chest. <laughs> it's a long story, Doc. <laughs> the, tail, the tail fucking whipping you to get you, get you out of there. Because <laughs> it used to being licked. <laughs> Beat it. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? A fly or someone licking my pussy? Yeah, exactly. Horses don't give oral sex. No, yeah. stupid horses don't know the difference. No, the horse would just think you were eating it, <laughs> gobbling it up. Ass <laughs> first. Tail will be giving you a whipping. Oh, shit. Uh, all right. <laughs> hey. That's a sure sign you've been eating horse pussy <laughs> when you have fucking ho horse tail hairs on your back and a fucking hook <laughs> mark in your chest. <laughs> Hard in breath. Yeah, exactly. And a little horse duty on your nose. <laughs> for good measure. Why? Because you were way up in there. <laughs> <laughs> your breath smells like piss and oats. Ah, <laughs> uh, wow. Is it true that Obama walked away from the uh, assault weapons ban? What? That's what uh, Carlos in Florida is saying. Oh, that's a bunch of shit. Language. Mm. Walking away. How <laughs> Jim, Jim, Jimmy Carter's already uh, on the bandwagon saying that assault weapons ought to be banned. Mm. Jimmy Carter. Because he goes, because uh, with assault weapons, uh, people don't need to have these to go into schools and uh, shoot police with them and stuff. It's like, oh, yeah, if you buy one, that's what you're doing. It's not just fun to shoot him down at the range. Stop. People buy cars, you could fucking plow them right into a crowd of people. But the thought is if there's less guns on the street, then the bad guys won't get there. Yeah, that's right. The They'll guns. all say, wow, we're plumb out of guns. What do we do? Right. Light, get me a machine gun. Sacks. Give me a machine gun. Yeah, but it's against it's the rules. Against the rules, I can't. Yeah. I can't. There, there are rules you must adhere to. Yeah, because you know something? Uh, um, a criminal element that is armed that's trying to rob you. Um, they love n knowing that people might be armed. It's a thrill for them. <laughs> w w do you think they'd rather know that anybody they walk up to doesn't have a gun? Wouldn't you think every fucking person that's trying to rob you would love to know that because of the, the, the rules in place that you are not armed? This is kind of like the same argument to keep fighting in hockey. Yeah. Because it keeps the sticks down. Keeps the let, sticks down. Let the people police the game. Right. The players police the game. Exactly. Let oh. the citizens police their neighborhood. I saw something great. It was in one of the NRA magazines, of course, and it showed uh, a map. <laughs> of showed course. Like, yes, of course. It showed like a map from um, Google Maps or something like that, and, you know, high elevation of a city, mm -hmm. and it's it, there was this, an area with a, a little arrow, and, and it said, your daughter here, and then right next to her was rapist with aids here no <laughs> and it was right next to her yeah yeah and then on the bottom it said now which solution would you want one was a condom one was a uh, cell phone one was a police car and then one was a gun and it's like you know something the gun's gonna be the yeah thing that'd that probably be the easiest to rape her with yeah 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 <laughs> the gun. <laughs> the gun. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. You, you, you condom me. Who cares? And what are you going to throw in the police car and fucker? I the go gun. The police are there to get the people ex post facto. Cell phones so you can be. You can call your friends. You're not going to believe what I'm doing. <laughs> Fucking sexting pictures of your assault. <laughs> Uh, rapist with AIDS. They'd be so dramatic. Yeah. Oh, I know. that. I thought so, Just too. Rapist. Like, so rapist is bad enough. With AIDS? All right. Rapist tax cheat with AIDS. <laughs> All right. Get it? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. I just got a great instant feedback. One of the guys from Radio Gold, RadioGoldFans.com. Is this true? Our buddy, yes. Uncle Ted, has a new show that's coming out. Uh-oh. 
Running Wild from anyone? Anyone? Running, don't, don't cheat on this one. Running Wild Ted Nugent's from new TV show called Running Wild from Now um, what's it about Uncle Ted? Huh? Uncle Ted. Yes. No way. Yes. Running Wild from Uncle Ted? Well, Running Wild from Ted Nugent. Mm. Here's the here, Uncle Ted. Here's the synopsis of the show. Nugent teaching a set of survival skills to three competitors. How to survive in the wilderness. Those competitors then will put those skills to use in the wilderness while Ted and his son hunt them. <laughs> That's an awesome show. Wow. But really the, hunt the, them. The ultimate prey. Yeah, like really kill them. I I gotta find out if that's real. Wow, you actually hit the garbage. It's button. real. Thumbs up to Danny. We gotta get audio of that. You know how fucking. You know how playable the audio from that's oh gonna be. Oh my god. That, let me. Tell oh. you what's, what's great about Ted Nugent is he's so humble. That's what I like. You know. No, he's I mean? not humble, Bill. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> isn't, uh, isn't, isn't Tommy Shaw coming yeah. in? Huh? Isn't uh, Tommy Shaw coming in? <laughs> yeah, Tommy Shaw is coming in. Well, he was he was in uh, Damn Yankees with oh, okay. uh, Ted Nugent. That's right, he so knows Ted. We could probably ask him about uh, what a tool Ted is at times. How about we try to get Ted Nugent on the phone right now if this is breaking uh, news in the is world it? of entertainment? Does he have the swine He's too club? dangerous. He, he, he eats meat. Yeah, he's he's like eating swine. He probably yeah. shoots boars with arrows and then eats them. <laughs> shoots a boar. Shoot everybody on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way he puts the names in. Al, not so sharpton. Oh, we get it. Instead of he's not smart. Good, good one, Ted. <laughs> Abu. Abu. <laughs> Bill, we have this weird thing with Ted Nugent. We love when he's on the show and then can't wait to make fun of him after he's done. Because I questioned some of his facts. <clears throat> Pardon me. Or I thought he might be like a little bit too much on one side. He was accusing me of okay, being. Okay, what? He was accusing me of being a liberal. I was like, Ted, you really are a fool. Yeah, you should listen to the show a little more. Then. Yeah, I'm not a liberal, you boob. Well, I've been over to see our brothers in Iraq. So have I, Ted. <laughs> so have I. You have? Yes, Ted. <laughs> you supposed to call him Uncle Ted. I refuse to call him Uncle Ted <laughs> until he fingers my bottom, call breathing him? alcohol in my face. <laughs> how, about, uh, how about Theodore? Theodore, I kind of like Uncle Theodore. That's right. Play that fucking, that one guitar lick that you play. <laughs> bah, 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 bah. Gotcha. We know it's catch Are you trying to say every song is a variation of this lick? I like Wang Dang Sweet Poon Tang. This one is like. Hate um, that song. No, the I, live version is good. I don't like any Ted Nugent song. I don't even like this. He's not this from is Detroit, big... is he? Yes, Michigan. What is it about awful white He's music? He's a Detroit, Detroit City yeah. Madman or something. He is Bob the Madman. Motor City Madman Ted or something. Kiss, right? Mm -hmm. Kiss is from New York, buddy. Oh, no, Kiss oh, from Kiss New York. Right, Detroit right. Rock City's the song. Oh, They're right. all New Yorkers. Yeah, he did give himself the nickname the Motor City Madman. Motor this City Madman. This is a decent Man. song. That's it. I don't even think he ranks on the top no, is... hundred of uh, Madman. I, no. no, what's mad about you, Ted? In, Thanks. Uh, thank you very much. In the Motor City. Boy, you are a whore. Why not? You are just a, an autograph yeah, what is that? whore. I got a stick CD to get Tommy Shaw to sign. Uh, why don't you get the Mr. Roboto? <laughs> because I want Dennis DeYoung to come in and act it out while we throw fucking tomatoes at him. Mama, you already got Tommy. I got you. We know. Fucking... <laughs> Domo Domo. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, uh, our own Steve has a new show coming out. We're going to do it. Uh, it's horrible. Say it. That's just some of the no, worst music ever. ever. It is really. But, well, he's, you know, going to be coming in. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, fuck him. Who gives a shit? <laughs> if you listen to this, just, just stay in the hotel. <laughs> Who cares? Steve has a new show coming out, our producer. But hope oh, they really? Can't, they can't stop rocking. <laughs> yeah, true. Steve's new show, Running Wild from Girls. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do we have an E-Rock show coming out? E-Rock. E-Rock. Walking slowly from everything. Because he doesn't run. Because I have the exercise. <laughs> Old Pelican Nick. <laughs> Be funny if you squeezed Eric and like tooth, like toothpaste his mouth just open and cum leaked out. Oh, <laughs> like, you're like That's what was making his neck so fat. <laughs> he just oh. held cum there. <laughs> That's what you do when you have nothing else, by the way. A guy blowing another guy joke. All he needed was a good <laughs> cum cleaning, and he would be nice and thin. Chris from Smithtown <laughs> writes, which is worse, swine flu or cat cat scratch fever? Ah, I'd say cat scratch fever. Yeah. I never want to listen to it. All right. Uh, family's chihuahua blown away by high wind or, mm -hmm. or 
21 year old in Cincinnati dressing up like a superhero and fighting crime. That sounds great. Has to be a retard. Yeah. Has to be. I'm a superhero. Bill, which one would you like to hear today? Uh, I'd like to hear the dog. <sighs> what is that noise? <laughs> is that driving you nuts? <laughs> Sound of silence. <laughs> I shouldn't mean to make this. Oh. Jimmy's unwrapping his. I meant to, I meant to say the CD. superhero. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it all awkward in here? <laughs> Jimmy has a Sticks CD. Who doesn't? Uh, that he wants. Let me think. Do I have a Sticks CD at home? Hmm. But the first song I ever related to a girl was a Sticks song. So I kind of have an affection really? for Sticks. What was it? Babe. When I was in sixth grade. Did they sing Lady? Lady? No. So, right? Wasn't that that? Was that Kenny yeah, Rogers? Kenny Rogers. Sticks He's my lady. No, that's no, a different no, one. No, who, who sticks did lady. lady. That's Sticks. Da -da 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 yeah, they one. did. What about Renegade? You're right. Let's go with Renegade, not Babe. This is your song that you. Uh... When I was in sixth grade. Babe, I believe in. I don't care what what grade you were in. I was a boy. In. You want to sing little, it? You were a little douche. You want to sing it? Uh... <laughs> well, babe, I believe in. That's what it said on his backpack. <laughs> What? Where are you going? Time is drawing near. But it says I must be on my way. Where yeah. are you going to tell this girl? Can I go to Valtrex? <laughs> <laughs> but did this hold special meaning? Like, why would you play this for a girl? Or I just used to pretend that I was kind of singing it to her. Yeah. I was a boy. Oh God! I just got chills. Why? I was <laughs> in sixth grade. I wanted to sing "Babe" to Jill. That was my sixth grade love. Oh. Uh, did, need your love. Love. Did he get her in the end? No. She moved away. Oh, babe, I'm leaving. Yeah. So she didn't call me babe. I had I had glasses with a no. Superman S on the side. Oof, she sang God. douche. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the big part, though. Were they considered cool sticks? You know something? At one point, doesn't sound so cool. They right were now. they were what you considered a rock band. <laughs> Well, Renegade. I yeah. Too much time on my hands. That's not tick, a rock. Tick, 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 away. That was a rock song. There was too much of that. Back in the day. Blue Collar Man. Yeah, see, this was like... This is Renegade. Come Sail Away. <laughs> Mr. Roboto. That's not cool. Lawman. I don't know if you call the guy Lawman. Lawman. I remember this song. When I used to work yeah. in a warehouse... Yeah, well, all the burnouts would start getting into it. Yeah, yeah, like they were renegades. Screw, screw up the the packing list order. <laughs> <laughs> Did they think they were renegades? <laughs> I don't know, but I was sitting there watching them bobbing their heads, and I was such a nerd. I was, I was like, yeah, this this must. And be here's where you're air guitar. To. You start air guitar. <laughs> yeah, and your head's bobbing. Uh, yeah, great. On someone's dick. <laughs> <laughs> it's a toe tapper. Yeah. I would, I would still turn this up if it was on the satellite radio. Yeah. I would, I would listen to this. Uh, Kevin from Connecticut. Eric has a song called Fat Scratch Fever. We didn't say that already? <laughs> Did we say that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, we, we better have. I'll listen to the replay. I don't know if we <laughs> did. If we did, oh well. <laughs> All right, so Tommy Shaw is going to come in. This is a toe tapper. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Dennis Young hate each other. I heard they broke up because Dennis wanted to act all the songs out on stage and everybody else just had it up to hear with that shit. <laughs> the robot thing? Yeah, they were like a writer already. This is not performance you, art. You know, he was a musical theater guy. I want to hear, I want to ask about that. You know the excuse he gave for leaving the band? Who, Dennis or Tommy? Is Dennis the one that is like, uh, is, uh, afraid of light or... That's right. Or, oh, uh, wait a minute. What was it? There was something going on there. Uh, he was sensitive to light. <laughs> Very sensitive. I swear to God. What is that? I don't know what it is. Years of being under the stage lights. Who so knows? Told? Yeah, maybe that's it. Screwed don't them all up. Him. So he stopped performing? Is that it? That's what I heard. That's what I heard. We could No, he's him. still doing gigs, though, but I think he is now. He's on solo. Maybe he's not sensitive uh, to light. Maybe he's got just sunglasses. Or maybe he's back in the closet. <laughs> 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 because it's dark in the closet. That's what I was going for. Yes. Oh, with mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's got a close relationship with his mom. 
All right, uh, let's go with the Chihuahua story, then we work into the superhero story, then Colin Quinn comes in, then we do PFG, then we get a dumb song from Tommy Shaw, and then we go home. That's what I say we do today. Wow. Cool. All Felt it the... all out. Exactly. Um, this uh, this high wind thing is, is a real problem. We had is an this... incident at, at our building where an old lady went flying and broke her uh, arm or something. When? It was a few months ago. Oh. From the wind? Dude, where we That's live great. on the river, the wind really yeah. gets crazy. And then I guess because it's blowing between the buildings, you could get some freaking lift. I literally have to lean into it. It's literally it's it's, amazing. It's called Millionaire's Row. And I have to. <laughs> no, but you have to lean into the fucking wind and just like kind of lean forward and walk. It's it's like 40 mile an hour gusts. It's no joke. Uh, they, yeah. they warn you before you leave the building sometime. A high wind. That uh, must be great alert. in the winter when it's just. Oh, it's horrendous. Like the wind chill factor is minus Dude, 30. It it's fucking awful. They call it, uh, they call it hat hell. <laughs> <laughs> Today is a hat hell alert. <laughs> Jesus. It's true. <laughs> Cancer wigs getting blown off. It can be very amusing. Somebody thinks they've been fooling people. <laughs> no, I'm not sick. I've been exercising. <laughs> the hair goes flying. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're saying hello to bald burn victims. <laughs> Because their wigs come off too. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's just. What's the matter? Old anus lips is chasing his hair down the street. <laughs> Who perpetually surprised face? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. The wind is making the two holes in his head whistle. <laughs> oh, no. Jesus. Oh, the guy with the. <laughs> <laughs> the guy with his glasses duct taped to his head. That guy is chasing a fucking awful hair hat. <laughs> my my hat, my hat. As a sign of his respiratory system. Yeah, he's got no, it's just two holes in the front of his face. How does he talk? <laughs> My hat, my hat, <laughs> with his asshole lips like his <laughs> anus lips. Someone got my hat. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, I just walked out of the side of the mouth. That's so terrible. <laughs> There's really uh, no reason for that. He's always surprised that he lost his hair. Of course he is. I heard old painted on lashes had to run down the street today. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> just fucking tears are just blowing past him through his, his eyelids can't shut. There's a fucking there's a there's a Mets hat with hair in it. <laughs> it's a one piece ensemble. <laughs> that fucking ill fitting tuft of wig. That shitty <laughs> old fucking Lego person. <laughs> <laughs> holy, holy no reason for it. Yeah, I love it. It's too goddamn <laughs> <laughs> wrong. Uh, so we got a chihuahua. <sighs> Right, right. The wind. Jimmy's going to die over here. It's, so <laughs> it's the way he talks to me. So my heart. My heart. My heart. Oh, the lips only half work. Of course they do. That's what happens when fire hits your face. Oh, fuck. Jesus. I don't think we need a visualization of wow. it, Danny. That yeah. just makes it sad. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Wow, you're having so much fun with oh, it. Oh, God. He's like old plunger face. <laughs> These are, are the people you're hurting. Oh. Yeah. I like seeing the people we're hurting and making fun of. Right. No. Um, uh, speaking oh, of the old... God, <laughs> the old Victor Ruiner. Oh, Let me see this. One of these things is not like the other. Oh, man, that's just fucking horrendous. That's really bad. That's, that's sad. Fire sucks. <laughs> it really is a bitch. Man. Uh, so we have a chihuahua. Yes. Flew away. Okay. High wind. Oh. And uh, Anthony from Vegas. Oh. Remember I was saying that old lady went flying and broke something? I think it was her arm. Uh, he writes, did she get the flu? <laughs> Opie. Ah, oh, see, because she... <laughs> 
Yeah, she um, it flew away. Flew. Yeah. <laughs> well, a local woman was heartbroken after this weekend's nasty weather left her in a horrible situation. And this sounds hard to believe, but it's true. The high winds literally <laughs> swept her dog away. This happened at a flea market in Waterford. It is a, a really unusual way to lose a pet. Devin, unusual to say the least. Now put yourself in this situation. Imagine your family pet, your pride and joy. Now Pre it literally <laughs> got blown pride away joy, in Jerry. front of their <laughs> eyes from the wind. Now the people are using a scene right out of the movie, I should say, and it really happened to one local couple here. And this weekend's weather, well, it's to blame. They tried to catch it too, but nobody could. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. The wind had her, and she was just going, on and her collar was found across the street. This weekend, we found ourselves... <laughs> what, is she being tortured as she speaks? <laughs> we got kidnapped. We found one shoe. Uh, <laughs> the collar was across the street. Yes, there was a note that said, woof. And you know what? Was flying. <laughs> Stupid old lady just wants to be left alone with her dumb chihuahua. You know, the thing was flying gun. like a superhero either, that it was just tumbling and yeah. banging on the yeah. ground and rolling. Shit was flying out of it, yeah. pissing in the circle. <laughs> Nervous idiot. A stupid panicked look on its face. Yeah. <laughs> dog doesn't understand the wind. Shaking. <laughs> yes. Stupid dog. This proves there's no God. Old lady, all she wants to do is uh, be yeah. left alone with her dumb chihuahua. 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 Street. This weekend, we found ourselves right in the middle of violent rain showers and whipping winds across Metro Detroit. Thousands were left without power, but this storm was more difficult for one family when 70 mile per hour winds swept up their most prized possession, their Chihuahua Tinkerbell. It's been very uh, upsetting. Even some of our children have been crying. They come down from the pier in Flint and our grandson. Maybe you shouldn't name it Tinkerbell. Yeah, it's supposed to fly. Right. Tinkerbell. All right, now, Devin and Ruth, I am pleased to tell you that this story has a very happy ending. I am not only joined by Dorothy and Laverne Utley, but Tinkerbell as well. Now, we are all so happy that Tinkerbell made her way home. Tell me how it happened, Dorothy. Well, we were Dorothy? on a local radio station wow. this a bunch morning of fucking for about two and a half hours, and a psychic had called, and she had told us that we were doing the wrong thing. She told us what to do. And we went and found her. And she told you the exact location to look. A psychic? She, did. she told yes, us in the to burn yard. found her. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> the dog blew through a bay window. <laughs> <laughs> Landed in her soup. <laughs> What a, what kind of crap is that? A psychic told her where the dog is. She can't find missing children, but she hears something barking. She knew which way the wind was blowing. Yeah. Check the weather. I mean, yeah, yeah. We how, have an how, easterly wind. Well, I think your dog is east. <laughs> Probably threw a softball up in the air and waited to see where that landed. Yeah. Said, all right, your, your dog's around there. Yeah, it wasn't like it was like a four-hour wind, right? It's a nice <laughs> gust of yeah, wind. Right. Where is it? It's, uh, you know, about 30 yards that way. Over there. Oh, there's Tinkerbell. Hind legs are broken. That's sort of dragging himself back. <laughs> Stephen S. from Bayshore is very angry today. He just writes, Tinkerbell's a cunt. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. No need for salt Told to us talk. and Burn found her. She, she'd come out of the woods running like a little rabbit. Oh. Right and, Burn. And it's, is it true that Tinkerbell really flew <laughs> over for, six for miles? Bit. She flew, oh, flew, and then she went. And she went over three lanes, over, on Dixie into the woods. And that's where she was. Well, Dorothy and Laverne, yeah. we are so thrilled here at oh. Channel 4. And all of our viewers oh, are yeah. too to have no, Tinkerbell we're not. home yeah. and no, say we're thank oh, you yeah. for being thank with us tonight. Much. Devin yeah. and Ruth will send it back to you. What oh, a remarkable you. story. Oh, it's incredible. what a remarkable The dog got blown across the street. Yeah. The news and was, it's a giant story. The news was hoping they were, they were going to find Tinkerbell and they'd have to scrape her off the front of a fucking Mack truck. Or yeah. something. Tinkerbell get blown into a lawnmower blade. Right, right. <laughs> Little feet. They're not happy that there's a happy ending. <laughs> they want to see the old broad crying as they head over the dead carcass of Tinkerbell. From the stumps. Yeah. It would have been funny if Tinkerbell got blown into the face of an invalid and knocked him out of his chair. <laughs> <laughs> was enough tragedy for this news station. Uh, it would have been a feel-good story because Tinkerbell left in the behind... Like them interviewing the old lady and see them like picking the wheelchair back up, <laughs> lift the guy up. Jesus, <laughs> it wasn't happy for everyone. <laughs> old, his Reattached wife. his IV. He had his oh, piss bag. <laughs> the dog blew into his face, <laughs> knocked him over. <laughs> Oh, 
Holy mother of God. Just in the background of the news story, you just see them writing the chair. <laughs> With the guy in it. <laughs> I can't even fucking breathe. <laughs> wow. Ah. <laughs> That story is um, adorable. Yeah, the headline's great. great. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's a flying chihuahua. <laughs> Enough about the chihuahua. Oh, I get it. <laughs> Blew away. It's not like it's an elephant. It's a fucking small dog. <laughs> Just a shit. <laughs> <laughs> You're really right. If there's a lot of something, then it doesn't matter if we lose one. Right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, 21 year old in Cincinnati dressing up like a superhero and fighting crime, or Club Soda Kenny's disco demo for the strobe. I want to go with the 21 year old first. Okay. Yeah. I'm it's hoping that there's demo. major problems there. Kenny made a demo because he wants to appear on uh, the strobe because we learned yesterday that's his favorite satellite radio station. I'm, I'm they guessing. Do you want classic disco? Yeah. Yeah. I'm guessing retard. This has to be some type of retarded person that puts a cape on. One can only hold. Oh my! <laughs> you know what? Fingers are crossed. <laughs> I already know what this is. <laughs> this is gonna be twenty more minutes of just watching these no, two. No one recognizes him without a Pete Rose wig on. <laughs> I knew who it was because he put the cape on backwards over his face and just walked into things. <laughs> <laughs> That's a slice, of, a slit in the front of the mask for the tongue to come out. <laughs> <laughs> no one notices who it is. Well, there's a big D on his cape. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on to your hats, kids, because here's the story. <laughs> and why does TMZ have a headline that says, Man buys unitard, <laughs> declares himself a superhero? Uh. Well, yeah. go. this is why the kid is doing what he's doing, right? He calls himself the Shadow Hare, a man who patrols the streets of Cincinnati to Shadow try to hair? stop the Shadow, Shadow Hare. H A R E. He calls himself the Shadow Hare. A man who patrols the streets of Cincinnati to try and stop crime and clean up the city. Uh. And he's not alone. Dressed like a professional wrestler with a cape, Shadow Hair is actually a 21 year old from Milford, although that's all he would tell us about his identity. He says he was abused as a child, <laughs> grew up in foster homes, and now has dedicated his life to helping others. Well, since when? Has Cincinnati had one great hero? Uh, Pete Rose. <laughs> that was Mark a... Shot. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, uh, let's see, Johnny Fever. Uh, Jerry Springer. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Larry mm -hmm. Flint, I believe, was shot in Cincinnati, yeah. am I correct? And um, was that the voice of the superhero? Which one? The high girly one? I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. What are we doing? I don't know. Any more of the story? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. No one knows anything. Shadow Hair is actually part of a growing community of citizen crime fighters from around the country. Most of them belong to a website called the World Superhero Registry and often travel in teams. Oh, Shadow boy. Hair leads a group he calls <laughs> the Allegiance of Heroes. Allegiance Assemble! We help. Enforce the law by doing what we can in legal standards. So we carry uh, handcuffs, tasers, pepper spray, all the legal weapons. And we eat them. We <laughs> do citizens arrest. And we will intervene on crimes if there is one happening in front of us. Oh, I hope they run into a gang. Oh, my God. And just <laughs> oh, get the I hope shit they run into beat a out gang. of them. What are you doing? That's Black Arrow? Yeah. And is he dead? This and is, Tomo, this is going to end very poorly. Oh, this is going to end really bad because you know why? They're not super. These are some of them on the superhero registry. You got Ghost. Amazonia. Amazonia. Can we join that? 
These are people that took the fucking like like games too far. Like took video games too far and think they could just go out there nostrum. Wait. What? We got to get look, we got to get a fucking face mask. <laughs> and fuck it, we have to <laughs> register Iraq. We got to join the registry. Hoagie boy. Hoagie, Hoagie boy. Hoagie boy could become a reality now. Green Scorpion looks like a douche. Of course looks he like he's wearing his mom's curtains and hat. Just like the Invisible Man. <laughs> What's this website, Danny? He's got Sandy Duncan's hat from Roots. Yeah. <laughs> this is WorldSuperheroRegistry.com. Look at how many there are. There's a lot of them. Wait, that's Batman and Robin. Well, they call themselves Whitley's Batman and Robin. That's fucking taken already. That's true. You can't Stroke. do that. Red Arrow. A lot of arrows. The Dark Guardian. Oh, Citizen Prime, Polar Man, Shadow Hair. Oh, there's Shadow Hair. Yeah, wow. Oh, wow look at that. The Down Syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> but in the real world, superheroes don't always win. Shadow Hair says he suffered a dislocated shoulder trying to help a woman who was being attacked a couple years ago. Nice. He's good. <laughs> Stupid. You're Stupid this. Shadow Hair. Shadow Hair. What does that even mean? <laughs> he doesn't know. Dummy. He's as fast as a rabbit, Mr. but you can't see him. He exists in the shadows. Wait, Mr. Oh. Silent is retarded, uh, retired? Yeah. Why well, is he what retired? Happened? What happened to Mr. Silent? He dislocated a finger. <laughs> Yeah, something must have happened. He probably got scared. Mr. Silent couldn't fucking... He realized his stupid character couldn't tell people to stop. Yeah. I like I like how human these things are. They don't sound... Uh, like They start off like they're superheroes. It says, I roam the streets of the city looking for those in distress or danger. And then I do my best to help them. <laughs> yeah, and I'm doing my best here. Uh, hey, look, I'm doing my best over here. I put a call into 911. I mean, what else do you want from me? If I ever fight... An army of robot, giant robots. I oh my, okay, this guy's fucked up. He's messed up. The, these are all retarded people. Yeah, they're fools. <laughs> they're fools. There's no. Wow. And although he sees himself as the eyes and ears of police, if there's anything that I can do, um, Die. please give me a call. All right. All right. Buddy. All right. Catch you later. Shadow hair and his team. Be great if the news footage and he promptly just ran out like like mock flying but running right in front of a truck. <laughs> <laughs> Get run over. That was great. Uh, that was a great superhero exit. All right. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, right. Anything I can, else I can do? Take it easy. You might have to practice your out a little yeah. better. And he's not going back. You know how silly he's got to feel because he's not going back to some big fucking lab or cave or something. He's going to his mom's house. And taking that off, and his mom's telling him to put it in the laundry. I bet, Don't leave I, your, your uniform on the yeah, floor. There's shit in the back of your <laughs> uniform again. <laughs> Fucking back just smells like ass because you didn't watch it. She always knows the crime has been committed because there's duty in the uniform. <laughs> <laughs> and cumsies in the front. And he got scared. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's how they know there's a, there's a missing toddler in the neighborhood because he has cumsies in the front of his uniform. <laughs> <laughs> Every one of these uh, uh, these nerdy superheroes has has the spider web. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the web power. Yeah, the power. What of are they, Do they list what their powers are? Do uh, they have powers or? Yeah, that's a good question. More of the clip. Right. right. All right. Catch you later. Shadow hair and his <laughs> team don't exactly strike fear in the faces of criminals or anyone else who saw them walking around Cincinnati earlier this month. Spider Man. That's what they look. <laughs> Homemade Spider-Man. What the heck is this? Man, it's a Easter. As for how legal all mm. this is, citizens' arrests are allowed in Ohio and Kentucky for felonies and some misdemeanors, although the person making the citizens' arrest risks lawsuits or possible criminal charges of their own <laughs> if they're wrong about the person they're accusing. Yeah. Oh, this is going to end badly. Handy. One of these people will be dead. Oh. Dead. Can't wait to see those. Huh? Another great reason to go to happen. Cincinnati. Yeah. Ah, yeah. uh, that's Cincinnati. In fact, I have a vacation coming up, and uh, we've been looking at some hotels there in uh, downtown yeah. Cincinnati. Yeah. <laughs> I see those commercials. I could just somehow stay right down near that dirty river. There, you know, that's not even that odd because you see the commercials for vacations for places that you'd never fucking go to. It's like they show people jet skiing and horseback riding and doing. It's like. Send for your Michigan tourism uh, pamphlet. 
It's like Michigan. All right, so I'm not going to vacation in fucking Michigan. Upstate. You go bird watching. Maybe you yeah, see yeah. a badger. Or they even a wolverine. <laughs> Good. They always show people kind of having not really fun. They're like, they got their arms around each other and they're looking at a sunset by some mountains. And it's like, come to fucking South Carolina. There's I always find it funny when there are to tourists in some place like that. Like you're going to do like a, a stand-up gig in like St. Louis. And there's a couple there. Oh, we're just, yeah, we're vacationing. Vacation here? Always, always wanted to see the arch. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You saw it. What's, now what? What's the second thing people do on vacation in St. Louis after the arch? Maybe a Cardinals game? Yeah, go, no, you go to a tour of the you can't count Budweiser. 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 Budweiser, the Anheuser-Busch oh, yeah, plant. And then somebody yeah, goes, you know, they have more bars per person in this. You know how many cities claim that, by the way? Yeah. This city has more bars per person than any other city. Blah, 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 blah. We're very proud of the arch here, and uh, you'll never find better people than uh, here in our fair. Shut it. You're lying. And they always have some sort of fucked up sandwich that you just have to get. <laughs> yeah. they, they, put, they put the fries right on the sandwich. Then they put a fried egg on it, and if you <laughs> eat the whole thing, you get a refrigerator magnet. <laughs> great. <laughs> you haven't been down there? Ah, oh, well, you, uh, you gotta go. Yeah, I haven't visited uh, this shithole until you go. Yeah. You ever had a horseshoe? <laughs> That's what they asked me in Springfield, Illinois. You ever had a horseshoe? No, I haven't. Oh, you gotta get one. Do well, I? What is it? Well, it's a horseshoe shaped bun, and they take three hamburger patties, oh, and they put it on there, and then they add this, and everything. Oh, it always ends with like a fried egg and shit on top. Yeah, it looks like a garbage. You gotta have one. No, I don't. <laughs> no, I've, I've had a hamburger with french fries. I don't need three of them all in the same bun, shaped like a horseshoe. You really don't have anything special here, ma'am. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, horseshoe. You definitely have some funky-looking bread, but other than that, <laughs> yeah, give you, me the have, bread. you have a number two at McDonald's. <laughs> uh, do that God. and rub Abe Lincoln's nose. That's what they tell you to do in Springfield, Illinois. They have a statue. His <laughs> forehead or something. <laughs> Oh, the life I lead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jersey Matt from Bayonne, the second thing you do in St. Louis is leave. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. Hey, man, they're on fire today. Can you we... go up in the arch, by the way? Can you what? Walk? Yes, I did it. It's one of the scariest things I've ever done. Why is it, it is, scary? Right? Because, for, because it was built... Uh, you know that time when the elevator goes sideways and then upside down <laughs> as you go back to the other Basically side. it. It's a cartoon <laughs> elevator. Any of that shit that was built during that time where we thought we were going to colonize the moon? I don't <laughs> yeah. know if you've ever been to, like, Seattle. Yeah, I've been to Space Needle. Yeah, like, they basically all that shit that they built during the World's Fair. And this yeah, is yeah. a monorail, and that looks like a big fucking toaster <laughs> hooked up to another one. Um, <laughs> yeah. Basically, when you go up into the arch, you get in these little... Remember that little egg that Robin Williams was in in Mork? Yeah. It looks like that. And you just slowly go up like this, and as it stops, it sort of swings from side to side. Are you shitting me? Is that how you no. get up in that And thing? then you get up there, and to look out the windows, you literally have to lay down on your stomach, and the arch gives like 30 feet or something in both directions. No. Because it's, you know, it's designed wow. that way. Dude, it's one of the scariest things I've ever been up to. You went up there, and then you could feel the thing moving. I, I, I literally, I looked out the window, I said, okay, I'm leaving. It's like 600 feet, right? I, I don't know. I don't know. Wow, that's fucked up. I didn't realize how they did that. Are the eggs inside or outside? It's inside. Inside. <laughs> it's <laughs> just the big story though is some idiot tried wow. to land on it on a. Uh, Danny, can I see it? There that? you go, dude. I always wow. wondered how they got the elevator to work, and it's kind of on a little round thing. But it's in. That's all internal. The eggs, and then you yeah. get out. The whole technology reeks of, like, 1963. <laughs> they play, like, a Kennedy speech. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's on to Chicago, and let's win there. <laughs> yeah. How the fuck do they build this thing? Uh, it's their big tourist attraction. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm making fun of it. I went to on it by myself. Oh, the saddest thing I ever did was I, I, I went to the Mall of America in Minnesota. Ugh. And I rode the what roller kind of coaster. Trash did you see there? I rode the roller coaster in the mall by myself just to do it, just to explore that level of loneliness. Did you even make it <laughs> seem like you were having fun? Did you go like, whoa, whoa, wee, whoa, what did you, or just sit there just like, I'm lonely? <laughs> no, just sort of like, I don't know. I was like, maybe I'll get a bit out of this. This is just so pathetic. <laughs> and I got nothing out of it. It was just sad. That then I walked so by 1,500 places where they sell shirts. The saddest thing is that's where their stadium, when the North Stars used to play. 
Is it really? Yeah, and they lost their team, not even because people didn't support it, just because the guy wanted to leave. It's like, yeah, this place sucks. <laughs> Let's make it into a mall. No, not uh, that. The biggest mall yes. in all of the country. And people from, like, the Dakotas, Iowa. That's mm. like a day trip. Let's go to the mall. One of the worst examples of futuristic, or what they thought was going to look futuristic, was the goddamn TWA terminal at Kennedy. That thing looked like something out of Planet of the Apes. Yeah. It just looked <laughs> stupid. The Wrath of Khan. Big, yeah, yeah, the Wrath of Khan. <laughs> Look at that thing. It's it's so stupid That should looking. be the fortress for those Cincinnati superheroes. <laughs> yeah. It should be checking people's bags. <laughs> I look at stuff like that and go, that must have been a pain in the ass to build. What happened to just building, like, squares and rectangles? You know, how the fuck do you build They that? got into this futuristic thing of what they thought, or, the, or their vision of what they thought the future was going to be, and the thing looked dated in, like, Jetsons. five years. Mm. Yeah, the Jetsons. And five years later, it just looked like, oh, my God, does that look like a, need a like new a one. passe little... Why don't we take a break? So we got Tommy Shaw standing by. Mm. And Colin Quinn standing by. Right. Right. I don't know if he is. That's just for radio. Yeah. I don't even know if Tommy Shaw is. Every day I ask the same question. I don't know. I'm like, you're sitting here with me. And yeah, I'm like, I have no yeah. idea. Just what you do on the radio, standing by, and then, then you run down the hall and go, are they here? And Steve goes, no. Oh, all right, we'll do something else when we get back. Bill Burr's at Caroline's all weekend, starting what, tomorrow night, Bill? Yep, Thursday through Sunday. The tickets got to be rocking. Uh -huh. They got to be, right? You uh -huh. don't even have to be here. Started charging Yankee prices. <laughs> it's 2500 down near the <laughs> stage. <laughs> you see what they did? They lowered those prices because everyone's like, why all the empty seats? And the Stadium's Yankees, empty, yeah. The Yankee organization went, oh, maybe we should drop some of the By prices. 40%. Have you seen those seats, though? They 40%. look literally like a first-class seat on yeah. an airplane. <laughs> an airplane, nice. really? They look, I don't know. Yeah. They, you look, gotta think, they look nice and cushy there, Jimmy. you got to think the animals that go to the Yankees games, the Yankee games, want to throw stuff on people that sit in those seats. Like, fuck those assholes. Yeah, like a bunch of fucking businessmen. Like, what right. kind of fucking... $2,500 seats for an Indians game? What kind of asshole does that? It's amazing. It's sad. Sad. Yeah, it does. Fuck that. What kind of a statement is this? <laughs> <laughs> when there's hardworking people <laughs> just trying to get cheese it's the New York $2,500. Get your Bill Burr tickets. I think they're open right now. 212-757-4100 for Caroline's. Dr. Michio Kaku, I think we finally uh, fixed this thing. Oh, good. So I think now it uh, better has all the stuff we want in this promo, I believe. We'll listen together. Opie and Anthony, Jim Norton, Bill Burr, and Danny on the beatbox. You're checking out the Opie and Anthony show. Can't stop rocking. That's Tommy Shaw with Kevin Cronin. That's the new single, right, Tommy? That's it. We're, we were just sitting here. We got Tommy Shaw from Sticks in studio. Very, very cool. And uh, we were talking uh, music and bands and uh, Freebird, get, uh, Freebird, Leonard Skinner getting back together in the late 80s. That's the dude that got it done right there. It's Charlie Brust got, got it done. He got, it, he got her done. He got <laughs> her, her done. done. <laughs> get her done. What's up, Tommy? Hey, good morning. Good morning to you. Uh, the first thing right off the bat, TommyShaw.com, that's your site. And then I see StixWorld.com. Who has Sticks.com? Uh, somebody, I think somebody just got, you know how people just make a, they, they yep. start just gathering up names. They, they got there first and, uh. You can't I, get it back from them? They they want some kind of a ransom for it. Ransom, exactly. <laughs> That's what it is, too. And, and the thing is, Google screwed that whole thing up because you use Google Sticks and their Sticks world. And, oh, perfect. You know, okay, good. You know, God bless them. Good luck with the next yeah. guy. You're much more yeah. you're nicer than I am because someone has JimNorton.com, and every day I just hope they wake up finding they have cancer. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> Uh, you know, with that huge laugh from Tommy Shaw, it also has to be brought to the table. I was so annoyed at this. Hey. And, and and the fans are keeping track uh, on the websites and stuff. Tommy Shaw recognized uh, Jim Norton. Uh, Jim Norton. Watch the DVD on the bus. Yeah, that's funny what, guy. Yeah, that's what people do. They just enjoy themselves on the bus. And they watch. It would be awful if he said none of us could sleep. We put the DVD on and we all just passed out. <laughs> <laughs> the, the bitterness was just, just fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, it is. You know what? Uh, what were you ten when you uh, were in sticks? I, Jesus, I, I just turned twenty-two. Did you really? Yeah, that was it. Wow. That was it. Yeah, because I was gonna say you look like pretty much the same. Oh, <laughs> you, know, well, pretty exactly. yeah. you know what helps? You know, you, you, the hair. You didn't have to go with the bandana thing. 
Yeah, or anything like yet. that. Yeah. You know, You're I'm one of the lucky, the lucky few that actually kept the hair. <laughs> <I'm telling> <laughs> it's, I, I, it's, it, it wasn't for not worrying about it. I was, you know, we always used to joke, you know, well, by the time we're 50, it's going to be the hat tour. And, and, <laughs> yeah. and I still reserve the right to put the, the, the headband and the bandana back on. It's like, fuck it. I, you know, I'm still going to, I'm still going to show up and play. And, but, yeah, but the, I'm going to, I got a funny looking head though. It's going to be really <laughs> shitty. But, Is it misshapen? But, I, yeah, you, you know, it's, 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 it's one. It's like you remember that cartoon Henry when you were look. It's like the big thing in the back and a big forehead, and it's just gonna be awful. <laughs> but I'm gonna show Zone. up anyway. I go. There's not time we show. Look at the fucking head on that guy. <laughs> <laughs> you play with a, a few people over the years too. Like, um, you know, we were talking about Ted Nugent earlier. Uh, you played with him. Yes. And yeah. uh, he, we've had him on the show a few times. Quite a. Uh, Unique personality on old Ted. <laughs> I love Ted Nugent. I, you know, I just I, he and I we have a lot of differences about us, but when it comes down just to the core values, we're you know we're we're brothers. Yeah, yeah. Politically, you get into like because I am. But believe me, don't get me wrong. I'm p completely on Ted Nugent's side with like most of his political stance. So. Yeah. You know, I, I've always been kind of a, you know, per, I've never liked to alienate any of our audience. You know, I was like, good hey, every, answer. <laughs> everybody comes see the show. You yeah, know? yeah. And, and and have you, you know, it's like personal beliefs, religious beliefs, and all that sort of stuff. That's a personal thing, and I'm yeah. not going to argue anybody's right to believe that stuff. So, you know, everybody. yeah, you get you get more fans if you just don't talk politics. Yeah, it's I true. truly believe what that. happened. It, it, you know, and, I, yeah. I truly believe and really, that. Yeah. You, you, then you know if you're not going to work with people because of that, you're you're limiting you know the guys are. you get to to yeah. do that. Nothing of stuff, better than right. guys that get up on stage and go, yeah, man, you know the government, man. And you're like, oh, guys, play your fucking <laughs> play your song. Yeah, really. Stop that's trying to tell me what the what I should be doing and what right. I should you be know, voting that's for. That's like when Eddie Vedder came out and he put George Bush's head on a stick. It's like, what the hell is that? Hey, you, can you just play, uh... Play Even Flow and Shut yeah. Up. <laughs> and think about it, even in our band, you know, we, we don't... It's like if somebody... You know, the longer you're out on the road and you start introducing songs, next thing you know, you're telling a story, next thing... The other night we're playing somewhere and I'm introducing uh, some song, and the music starts coming up. It's like the fucking Academy Awards. Like, you're going too long. I'm like, what? I'm in the band. You don't... don't they, they, like, shushed me on stage. <laughs> you had <were> cut off. <laughs> It was fooling yourself, you know. I was getting ready. All of a sudden, mm -hmm, this, this sense music's coming up. Like, how long have I been talking? Oh. Is, this, is this like what you pictured though? When you were, you said you're like 22 <laughs> years old and you're you're in a, a, a huge band and everything. And is this kind of what you pictured getting older and and still playing would be like? No, I, I'm 55. I thought 55 was it. You're 55. Yeah. Jesus Christ. What the fuck is going on with these guys lately? We had Maury Povich in. He's, He's 70. Seven. He looked like he was maybe 62 tops. Well, you don't look 55 there, Tommy. Well, thanks. It's I, I thank my mother. She's got the good genes. <laughs> do you live a healthy life or do you like do the complete opposite and just like all of a sudden here you are healthy? I, 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 I complete debauchery until about 20 years ago. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. You figured it out, yeah. yeah the just, whole behind the music kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, the whole behind the music thing, you know, I, I, I you know, almost, <laughs> I, I screwed my, my hand up, putting it through a window in the, in the, in, when's that, 83, you know, five tendons severed and wow. all this shit, and, and I just took that, you know, they, they said, well, you gotta take a month off, right in the middle of the Roboto tour, and, and I was like, shit, I'm going to party now. And I, you know, so <laughs> none of that stuff. You didn't want to play Mr. Roboto? Then, then well, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't anymore, you know. No, no only I was the one. Why, that's why he put his hand through the window. <laughs> that's kind of what I was I getting was, at. I think it was the Quaaludes. Yeah. Did you like playing Mr. Roboto? I, I didn't mind playing it. It was the, doing the acting part of it because I, you know, I just I I I, I wanted to just play. Right. But, and was uh, that was that more Dennis's push to 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 make it more of a musical theater type of thing as with you guys performing live? Well, what that was was just kind of the fine the the the, the really pinnacle of us starting to go our different ways. And uh, he he created this great thing. And the worst thing about it was he had a band who didn't really feel like doing hmm. it. So so. You know, when you're doing something like that, it re really requires everybody pulling in the same direction. So that that would have probably been better if, if he had gone on and, and just led it himself and, and had all of his own people doing it. So, you know, it, it was 
But that so you said, guys were just sort of staring at him as he would go, okay, in five, six, seven, eight. And <laughs> <laughs> going, ah, dude, I just want to play my guitar here. No, you know, we were, we were, we were always a band. We would we would get behind something, even if if it was if we weren't a hundred. If if it was something that was something that was good. But at that point, we'd been on, we'd been traveling on the road for almost eight years, and and if we had been a little Jesus. older and more mature, we would have gone. Look, we need to take a break. Let's go. Let, we can't miss each other if we don't ever leave, you know. So we'd been, it's, it was like stuck in a room with each other for eight years. But you know, that's all. That's all hindsight. And the, the nice thing about it is, regardless of how we felt with all that, I still have people coming up to me and say, "You guys were my first concert, the the Mr. Roboto tour, and, and I love you guys." So sure. I'm not going to argue with that. Did what he, was? I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to ask because we're on Dennis DeYoung. Did he really have a problem with light, like we saw on the the TV? What was it behind the music or whatever? I don't know. You know, it's we really haven't worked together since 1997, mm -hmm. and and I look at that as like if. That's that's the time between you starting the first grade and now you're starting college. Hmm. Yeah, I, you know I don't even know where I'm going to be next week. So yeah. some of this stuff is you know I start forgetting about <laughs> about yeah like stuff. what happened and yeah and, things like that and and plus you know that's twelve years ago you know now uh, before I was so rudely interrupted when I asked you earlier um <laughs> Jimmy so <laughs> that's okay uh, did you did you picture like this. Um, at being 55 and, no. and still playing, what what were your impressions early on of what you would be doing now, and as opposed to what you are doing now? I don't know that I thought that far ahead. Really? But I just when I would see people 55 years old, they just seemed kind of crusty, and you know, <laughs> and and uh, it, they just seemed like grown ups, and that that was, you know, I'd probably be dead before I got to that point. So I, I wasn't really prepared for this, and it's really now that I'm here, it's like, well, I'm, I, I've had a lot more experience, but I'm still kind of dressing the same and and getting up and doing the same job. So that I think that's probably what's so. Probably what gives me such a, uh, a not realistic view of, of the world is because I still do the same thing that I've always yeah. done. I, I haven't had to really ad adapt to too much. The, and has it changed your music though? Just kind of living life and uh... yeah. Well, you know, you always write what you know. You write what you're going through and, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I practice more than I used to. Really? <laughs> yeah, I never used to practice. You know, because I was, you know. I was a lot a of other time. things to yeah. do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, ben. <laughs> I got to jump in for a second. We got a big star on the line that wants to say hi to Tommy Shaw for real. Jay Moore, Jay. Hi everybody. We got uh, Tommy Shaw in studio. Hi, Jay. Okay. I know. I'm such a huge Tommy Shaw fan. I love Stick, but we all know the real rock mind behind the band Sticks, and that's that man sitting there right there. Hi, Tommy Shaw. Good morning. Good morning. I, I just want to say I think it's really great that you're going to be with me at the Wilbur Theater in Boston this Saturday. Sweet. <laughs> oh, that is the cheesiest plug I've ever heard. But you got it. You got to tip your cap to fucking Jay. Anyone that's going to be in Minneapolis this weekend, man, go see Jay Moore. No. Not Minneapolis, Boston. Oh, sorry. Oh, 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 you're right. <laughs> you guys are brutal. Jimmy, I help you. You help me. Fair enough. Wilbur Theater this Saturday. Jay Come Moore. On, you got to sell tickets for the Wilbur Theater. You don't want Bill Blumenreich to have anything over your head. Jeez, Louise. <laughs> Damn. This is what I know. Stay <laughs> out of there. <laughs> Oh, thank you for the call. That was a Jake. plug. Jay's one of the calls. Plug. Jay just called <laughs> to plug his Wilbur. And you know, and he's telling me I'm going to be there. For, I'm going. Yeah, okay, I'm there. Yeah, yeah well, I'm well, well, <laughs> That would be get funny. Boss and get off when they tell me. To. A bunch of like uh, uh, sticks and damn Yankees fans believed it and showed up and then just threw fucking rocks at Jay and they fucking <laughs> set the place on fire and he got sued. <laughs> How great would that be? <laughs> well, yeah, damn Yankees was a uh, that you, you come out of sticks. Yeah. And uh, you go into that, a, a pretty different direction as far as uh, musically goes. It was a lot more um, hard rock. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, my whole career, uh, I've always just kind of faked my way into the next thing. <laughs> and when I joined Sticks, I'd, I'd been in a soul band. A, a, I was in an eight-piece horn band. And, uh, and, you know, we played a little bit like some Uriah Heap but in like uh, CTA stuff and... Uh, but it, it really wasn't like a hard rock band. And Sticks was a progressive rock band. Right, yeah. And so 
but I was able to sing and hit the parts, and I looked the part, and I, and I actually was a songwriter and, and lead singer and lead guitar player, so I was qualified for that gig, and I was like, they gave me all the albums. I went home and learned to set and kind of went out and just started, okay, I've still got the job, you know. And then how did, how did like, Damn Yankees come about? I mean, you got... I went to my manager at the time, bands. and I, I, I had had uh, you know it wasn't the high point of my uh, of figuring out life and behaving like a responsible person. And that so I, I made some solo albums, but I, I realized that you shouldn't you shouldn't do a lot of blow and uh, and drink <laughs> heavily when you're in the creative process. <laughs> Sounds and, good to you <laughs> at the time, right? It hasn't sort Just of a ass. dire effect on the quality of your uh, your performances. But so I and also I was used to being in a band the whole time so i was mm -hmm. kind of lost in those early days trying to make solo records and i went to my manager and said i want to be in a band again and uh he called our friend john kolodner uh and john and it just so happened uh ted's manager doug banker was in kolodner's office that day and we were we were all kind of thinking oh, we wanted to do something different and john said what about you and ted nugent and ted and i had just seen each other we, we were down at a conference at uh, in miami where the the heads of uh, some of the major labels were, were showing all they're talking about making this dat player into something portable ah, they'll never do that <laughs> and we're sitting back there going jackass <laughs> we're laughing at these guys and and so we had just seen each other and i was like well i would have never thought of that but sure so ted came to new york michael cardelloni was already in the the, the solo band that uh, that uh, I was in at the time, and so he, Ted just kind of came in, and we started jamming, and we and we we actually sat down and wrote the song "Come Again," and mm -hmm. and uh, and Ted Ted wrote the lyrics to that song. Really? Yeah. Do, you, do you remember that song? I was a loner, cruising with the wind. I wasn't looking when you pulled me in. Like I always did You knew damn well I'd come again Really like nice sweet <laughs> lyrics And I'm going And Ted was He was in love And he was like he was, he <laughs> Yeah was really that's was not and his yeah. <laughs> But we saw this side of Ted that not only was he this, he was Ted Nugent, but he also had this kind of sensitive side to him. And uh, he actually wrote those lyrics to a shotgun. <laughs> 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 he, did, he, was, he was, he did have a gun on him at the time. When we discovered that too. But but we we started working like that, and and it just it just came together. And and within a couple of weeks, Jack Jack Blades. Also called John Collider and said, "I want to. I want to be in a band. I want to rock." <laughs> and uh, so Jack showed up on my doorstep, and this this all happened so quickly. And at the time, we'd been trying to get Sticks back together, but we were so we were just we were just we were such a slow moving, uh, you know, burgeoning organization <laughs> that it was like trying to get something done in a big corporation. You know, you'd have to get meetings and people would have to fly in, and it was taking years to try and just get back together. Damn Yankees was two, three phone calls. You want to do it? Yeah, okay. We, there's our, you know, it was settled. Do you ever look and think? Wow, this has success written all, all over it. Because I mean, you guys had some hits with the Damn Yankees. Did you did you think it would? It would just be kind of all right. We're all in a band now. Let's go out, kicking around, have some fun. Or, or did you really think, all right? I, I think we got something here where we can uh, get some hits. We wrote all this music. Jack came in my house and he was downstairs doing laundry, and I heard him down there going, "I don't want to hear about it anymore." And I'm like, "All right, what is, what's the next line?" <laughs> and so I went over to, to the piano and I went. Can you take me high enough? Jack, come, come on back upstairs. We Drop wrote, the laundry. We high enough. And, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's try to make some money here. Minutes, <laughs> and we just the music just started flowing like that. So we're thinking, this is going to be great. So we made some demos. Uh, uh, Kaladner said he's going to put us in the hit factory, and he put us over this place over in Hell's Kitchen. That we're looking out the window, and you can see down in the railroad tracks, people are down there shooting heroin and stuff. And we, so it wasn't the we call it the shit factory. Because, <laughs> but we did all our demos there, and it's, it was all you know bad reputation. You know, all the all the songs were on the first Damn Yankees album. We mm -hmm. started having 
started playing it for record company guys and the head of major labels that come over there and we're playing this stuff live one in particular who who knows who he is and and he's still successful but we finished uh one of the songs it might have been uh, uh coming of age or something like that and he's over there looking at his watch and he says man I, look i, I gotta run do you guys want to hear the new stone single oh, and we're like sure man Thanks. fine whatever <laughs> But it wasn't until uh, uh, you know that Michael Austin and at, at uh, Warner Brothers heard it. He signed us up, believed in us, got Ron Nevison to produce it. Then it started feeling like it was going to be a success. Yeah. But it, we, we still had to pay some dues. How great is it that asshat has to know that he passed? There's <laughs> 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 it, nothing better than that than just to succeed. Some guy with, with, yeah. with the reputations of the people that were there. I could see if it was just four unknowns. But, uh, I mean, you guys sitting there, and for this guy to still be a pompous idiot about it, it's like, good, fuck him. <laughs> you know, it, it, it put us with the right guy. If he had, if he had said, oh, I'll sign you guys to see what will happen, you know, we no may support. never have heard yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it turns out Michael Austin was behind us the whole way. Anthony, wasn't um, one of your wedding songs that damn Yankee song? Um, let me think. Wow, I think it might. A lot have of been. listeners saying, uh, "Was it Ann's wedding song a damn Yankee song?" Yeah, yeah. That uh, marriage didn't work out. I hope you guys. <laughs> I hope you guys in the band got along better than oh, yes. me and the old wife did. Wait, that was that. Wait, yeah, you guys wrote taps. <laughs> we got we got obviously Tommy Shaw in studio. He's got a guitar. You want to want to really sing something oh, for hell us yeah. instead I'll of try. a little piece? Let me try. Let me Sounds try. amazing. What man. do you got for us today, Tommy? It's well, really up to you. you. What do you want? Well, of course we'd go with Renegade or something, but I, I don't know. That what was that first? Uh, Cause I'm not as familiar with Dan Yankees as I am with uh, with, with high Sticks. enough. What was the first was a, one you would you, you start? Yeah, the first it. one you play, you could p play that one all the way through. Which, Which one was that? You just you said on the Ted wrote um, all the oh. all the sensitive ones. <laughs> yeah, that sounds really good. <laughs> yeah, the voice really sounds good. Man. Let's start second verse. Now I'm falling where I've never been. My resistance this is the highest one I've ever so <laughs> wearing thin. Like a long lost friend. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Lord, here I come again. Come again. Something like that. Yeah, you you nailed it. Tommy Shaw. 
I know we picked, we picked woo! like, woo! I know, I'm yeah, 9.30 in the it. morning. That's like, you know, so that, that sounds fantastic, man. Absolutely. But it, thank you. Unbelievable. But it's funny, it's fun to watch a performer, because like, as, as you're going through it, I'm like watching you go like, what the fuck was that next verse? <laughs> oh, just kind of grabbing for it, and it's like, a lot of guys don't want to sing this early in the morning. You sound that great, too. Oh, thank you. Just uh, great. I'm really cool. Everybody's requesting stick songs. I mean, everything from Crystal Ball to Renegade and everything in between. Well, Kevin and I came up with it because Kevin Cron and I were in town were, uh, promoting the, the tour, and we went. We we, we did a, had a Broadway de debut the other night. Kev Kevin Cron and I actually performed on Broadway the other night in uh, Rock in the uh, curtain call for Rock of Ages. But as we're doing this, we're th we're thinking, you know, we we're doing TV shows and they want bumpers and stuff. So we're like, huh. what the fuck are we gonna do? So we came up with a almost like a bluegrass version of uh, Renegade because Renegade's hard to it's, it's this orchestral yeah. song. If I can do it. Oh, mama, I'm in fear for my life from the long arm of the law. Long man is putting in my running and I don't have very long Oh mama I can hear you crying so getting all alone Hangman is coming down from the gavel and I don't have very long The jig is up the The renegade who had it made a tree for a bounty. Now I'm going to go astray. This will be the end of the game when I want a man. Oh my God! What else can we do? What else can we do? I'm having fun. Tommy Shaw on tour all summer with Sticks and uh, Ariel Speedwagon and 38 Special. That's right. That's right. Oh, you guys. Okay, you are going out with. Uh, and you're going to be here in the area too. I was asking. Uh, uh, when are you going to be in uh, PNC? PNC? June 24th. June 24th. Okay. And all tickets you can get at Ticketmaster, or of course, there's TommyShaw.com. These shows will obviously sell out. But you guys, uh, you guys are one of those bands that were just all over MTV uh, right after its inception and stuff. Yeah, too uh, much time was played in yeah. the first hour of MTV. Oh, it, really? Really? It was, uh, yeah, and that one was just played a lot. But yeah. uh, it was one of those you just sit and watch and stuff and look at your funny faces. Oh, I know. Yeah, the, the, the videos. The videos. You know, and we were we were kind of scot free, and then comes along YouTube, and now they're all um, they're all back. They're all yeah. back. Not After a while, those. it was like no one could see these now anymore. Good, they're tucked away. I know. <laughs> oh, the bangs, you know. The... <laughs> oh, come on, that shit. It seemed right at the time, though. Tommy. Total. Uh, come on. Totally brings me right back when yeah. I watch that shit. Though I great. thought I was so cool back then. <laughs> you <laughs> were back then. Was the shit, man. You know? Tommy, you were that always was, cool. That was what you wanted to do back then. That was like how you never did. do drugs and cut your own hair. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't. Uh, no matter how good an idea it seems. <laughs> No one looks back and thinks that they, they, I think they call it with like with everyone. It's, it's called the asshole infinity syndrome. It's like whenever you look back, you're like, "What an asshole I was!" But now I'm okay. And then five years from now, you think, <laughs> you look back and hey, think you're an asshole, asshole now. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, when we first got the band back together in Sticks, we thought, "Hey, look how much cooler we look now." I look back those ten years ago, and we're like, "What were we thinking <laughs> again? What were we?" I know. Thinking? So like, am I today? I'm gonna look back to these jeans and a t-shirt. What a stupid idea this was. You could really, you can't really lose with a jeans. And and, uh, with jeans and a T-shirt, though. Yeah. You know. Well, that's, I, that's I, the genius of uh, Malcolm Young. <laughs> 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 Never looks out of style. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> How long has Sticks been back together? Uh, well, it's uh, on the twenty fourth of this month. Uh, it was ten years since Lawrence Gowan joined the band, and and oh that's when gosh. I know. Can you believe this? And he sounds a lot like uh, Dennis. Well, you know, he doesn't really when you start when you start a being them, but but he's got his voice sounds so good in that register that that you know if you don't have if you're not just playing things side by side, you right? Know, it it really it does justice to the songs and he in in the past 10 years he's really made them his own is there like um is there like real bitterness between you guys or have you just kind of did you grow apart artistically or do you really like like yeah if this is probably somebody i'll never work with again I, I i never say never to anything but really the the whole time that we were in a band together we we, we never really hung out uh uh i, I think 
Dennis came to my house one time the whole time we were in the and it wasn't that we weren't friends it was just that we saw each other enough on the road and and he lived in Chicago and I lived in Michigan and and uh, you know we we were, we when when we were doing that, there there wasn't this appetite in the media for for all this intrigue and and mm. what's going on and any kind of so so you never knew anything about what was going on with sticks. We we could have these horrendous arguments. And they, if you ever see this uh, this video of a song called "Sing for the Day," mm. uh, you know we look like the sweetest bunch of little little American guys. We had just had this. We were ready to kill each other's <laughs> argument. Okay, guys, here we go. Beep, beep, beep. There goes the playback thing. And we're like, <laughs> looking at each other and smiling. And my wife says, you guys look like you're, like you're about ready to have sex with each other or something. <laughs> said, no, it's just because we're so pissed off. It was like, I ain't showing it. You're going to show it? <laughs> and no one ever knew that, that we just had differences of opinions on stuff. And it made a good behind the music because at the time we were, we were, had, had everybody just kind of separated and we we're still trying to figure you know you know when you <clears throat> it's like a divorce okay you can move away and everything but wait a minute i bought that couch that's my couch <laughs> i want that fucking couch <laughs> and then after all, you know, you, i am getting the couch okay but i'll give you some money you can get a new couch <laughs> so you're happy to wear bands that now like you're you're happier i think everybody's happier you know uh Dennis is he's 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 such a great creative force, and he you know he, he's he's single-minded in his his what he wants to do, and a lot of that really led to the success of the band. Uh, and I was just kind of a kid when I grew up, when I, I grew up in Sticks, and uh, but there came a day where where his 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 likes went more towards the theatrical stuff, and, and ours were still kind of the progressive band that we'd always been. So. What was a piece of the theatrical, or what was something that would happen on stage? Because I, I never saw that stage show, but I remember hearing about it. it it's like it, it was people talked about the strain it had put on on the band. What was some of that? Uh, well, like you said, they, they had to start performing and doing the robot and all no, this. But and, is that what you would do? I, I don't like. What, oh yeah. What would you think yeah. It got, it got very, it, very I, I've seen Sticks a million times. It, uh, they got very theatrical. Well, and he just wanted to kind of just be in a band. Yeah, and he, that was you know, the separation. That really should have been a theatrical performance. But our whole way of doing things was to route a tour, go out and play arenas, and then try and play as many, you know, play, play some stadiums and things like that. And but that really belonged in a theater. And we came to, right. to uh, New York. We played. What was the name of that theater? The uh, City City Center. Uh, and tr trouble is, you know, the 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 momentum of the band and the way things would normally do, you gear up and you do all this stuff. So we're bringing in all the truckloads of stuff, and you can only put about fifteen, you know, maybe fifteen hundred people in that place. So it started just snowballing the expense of the whole thing, and we didn't have any any uh, any sponsors or anything. So we're just all writing checks for this thing <laughs> that we didn't really want to do. And so all all those things after eight years, it just it there. And we had a, a new management company. Our old manager knew how to get in between us and solve those things. And we could go yell at him and go, "This guy, I fucking hate him." And he would, he would. And the other guy would say, "I hate that motherfucker too." And but we would never say it to each other. Right. We had new management, so we had no one in between us. And so all these things really came. It, it just want, you, you start crumbling the foundation of the band, and and it, like I said, we really should have taken time off. How is Nugent to create to collaborate with? Because he seems like when you interview him, Ted's a very headstrong guy. He seems like, but is he a fun guy to like to collaborate with and and, and like uh, to sit down and bounce? With? Like I don't like that line. Maybe you'll try this line. It, Ted, Ted. Um, what I love about Ted is he, he will come in and he'll throw everything he's got down on the table first in the first 10 minutes. And he can basically <laughs> leave. And, and you can take what he has put down right there and, and you can work entire songs around it. And he, he, Ted's, he's got a short attention span. He, he's like this guy. He gets more done in one day than most people get done in a month. Yeah. So so once you figure that out with Ted, you don't expect him to be around for the whole thing. And And so like with High Enough... Jack and I wrote this thing, but it, it, we were in my apartment here in New York, and all I had was a keyboard and a little, you know, thing to record it on. So it was fucking keyboards, which Nugent he uses keyboards for target practice. <laughs> Serious, <laughs> he does. does. Yeah, he shoots, he blows up. Keys. He's not a he keyboard fan. No, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so here we are. We made this demo with a drum machine and a keyboard. That's all I had. You know, that I could record. I didn't have microphones in the in the place. And, but it was high enough, 
And we're thinking, shit, this sounds good, but it's got keyboards in it. So what are we going to do? So we're taking it back to the, the, uh, the where we were rehearsing or playing it for the crew, and they're going, shit, this sounds good. What are we going to do? It's got keyboards. And, and then Nugent happened to walk in and overhear it, you know, and, and said, well, all this thing needs is a, you know, it gets his guitar on with it, you know, turns it up all the way, and, and you know, and puts the, all the Nugent on it. It was like, and he was right. But that's that's really that was Ted's contribution to High Enough was that he put the Ted Nugent stamp on it. So he didn't ask. He didn't complain about the keyboards being in it. There weren't any. We took the keyboards. Oh, you out. took them out. Yeah, that was just a demo. Oh, it okay. Out, re mm -hmm. Replace it with Ted. Yeah, <laughs> and, that, and then it just worked. <laughs> and then, yeah. Um, people are requesting fooling yourself. Uh, could you give us a taste of fooling yourself? It, yeah. It's made for the acoustic guitar, I think. Fooling yourself. Pulling yourself. We got the coolest jobs. Just sitting here watching him play that yeah, for right? us. Yeah. That's amazing. See, you're right, this like is kind of a fucking fun gig. <laughs> I get to you watch a show from like three feet away. I know, you forget sometimes. <laughs> what? Quarter in. I was literally thinking yeah, that right? like halfway through. Like, yeah. why, why do we bitch ever? Why? Why don't we uh, bitch? So Mike, cool, the, man. And, and they said that you don't like playing Babe, and that's fine. You know, but I remember the first song I was telling them before, and I really got a fucking beating for it, was that the first song I ever had associated with a girl was, was Babe. And then here's one of the guys in the band fucking singing. Hey, look, I, I, yeah. I, I wrote the solo part to that song. We, we played it one time, and it just does. That, that's a personal song that Dennis wrote for his wife. Yeah. He asked us not to play it. He asked me, you know, because we, there were a couple of times where I we kind of took the piss out of it in, in Chicago, and one time in particular, mm -hmm. Damn Yankees played there, and, <laughs> and uh, you know, we're all full of ourselves, and, you know, um, there's still a little bit of rivalry going on back then, and so we're at the, at the World Theater, I think, and, yeah. <laughs> and we did this thing, and I come out, you know, in the middle of the Damn Yankees set, instead of playing Come Again, I go, I always want to play this song, so I started playing Babe. And Nugent's kind of hovering over me, like, hmm. <laughs> and he said, he taps me on the shoulder. He said, "Look, your, your guitar's a little bit out of tune. Let me just check it out for you." And he takes my guitar off and smashes it into the <laughs> oh, and throws shit. it out in the audience. <laughs> well, Dennis's daughter was in the audience, and she came back to, and said that was kind of shit. You know, that was that wasn't cool. And what so, you doing? What, what What did you think when you saw her face when she came back? We all got bleed. Oh, we in Chicago? <laughs> you think you're really funny, and after you think about it, it was like, <laughs> man, that wasn't that funny. Hi, I was just thinking of your dad. <laughs> what, yeah. did, uh, <laughs> what did he thought he was in St. Louis? <laughs> we, we, we ran into each other in an elevator in uh, in in Syracuse, New York, and we kind of worked that all out. And I said, yeah, I won't do that anymore. Yeah, what did you uh, did you ever see um, Cartman's rend rendition of Come Sail Away? And that uh, was fantastic. Yeah, did you think that was hysterical? Well, we had, had Todd, our our drummer, had brought us like a 
third or fourth generation videotape of the first episode of, of South Park where it was Santa and Jesus. Oh, right? yeah, we oh, all yeah. got that. Classic. So we, we, we were on with South Park from the very beginning was when it was just underground like that. So yeah. when, when we were, like, spoofed on, on uh, South, that was like, <laughs> think about cool. it, you know? Yeah, that is pretty cool. <laughs> that was very cool. And, like, uh, in Jack's, Jack Blade's son, James, he was about, I think he was in college at the time. He he'd never even heard Come Sail Away before. And he really? was like, that's you? That's your That's your guy's song? <laughs> so it really it helped. Help. Anytime something new like that comes along and introduces a whole new generation mm -hmm. to your music, you know, you got to just you gotta love it. thank your lucky stars. What do you think of bands going on way past uh, the original members leaving the band? Because we talk about that from time to time. So it really depends on... Uh, yeah, you got to judge it band by band. Sometimes it works, sometimes it, it doesn't. Mm. Yeah, like like. Oh uh, yeah, sure. You got um, Journey, the new singer for Journey, sounds exactly like Steve Perry, uh, but to, to I the think point that where where it, you know it becomes a tribute band. <laughs> you know, except you got you got the rest of the band. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, but I'm saying that those guys eventually retire, move on, and then the new guy from uh, Journey, all of a sudden you got a hit. So then, you know what I mean? The popularity stays up as you guys decide to move on. Yeah. It's almost like a franchise in the end. Like, you could be sitting home. Well, and, and Journey Journey is a unique thing. Their song list is so good, and it's so it's like part of my DNA. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, to, mm -hmm. and to have Journey continuing on, especially with a guy who's, who's that good of a singer that he was, he's inspired the band to yeah. play better. And he, he, is, he sings those songs like Steve Perry at his peak mm -hmm. and it's so good it's like well okay i know you know it's like i, I know you're not my old girlfriend but you look just like her. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you look like her you look like a younger version of her you, <laughs> you fuck better than her and you ask for less money than her so let's go <laughs> <laughs> i just you know i'll, I'll it's the, what is that, the, the uh or the disbelief thing like when you're watching a movie you know um uh, yeah, so so with Journey, I'm I'm gl I'm so glad they're still out there playing those songs mm -hmm. because you want to hear those songs. Again. Oh, the people sure. are the places of the pack. I mean, there I is think the, just the a... biggest thing is the lead singer. The lead singer, the, the worst is when you go to see a band. I don't mind if you get all. Everybody gets older when you go and the dude can't sing anymore. And yeah, the that's... high notes, and they just stick the mic out to the crowd, or they just cut it off really quick. Or yeah. they just say it instead of singing it. Or that's they got the like worst. a line of backup singers doing it. Yeah, that's <laughs> the like high part of something. Yeah. It's I mean that's I guess. I guess that's taking care of yourself partly, partly just age or something. I mean, you sound fantastic. Well, I mean, you still obviously have the pipes there, which is uh, oh yeah, great. Thanks. Yeah. You know, sometimes you look at it like like a like a say '57 Chevy. You know, if you want to see the '57 Chevy that's been redone from the ground up. You know, it's in, with the new paint job on it, or you want the one that's been sitting out in the. You know, sometimes it's the one that's sitting out in the field and it's just just not. <laughs> Won't start, you know. It's mm -hmm. it's and it's all original. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> that's quite rust there, it yeah. out behind the barn. You, but yeah. then you got sometimes the all original one that somebody's taking really good care of. You yeah. Know? So it's it's yeah. all well, it, it, band by band. You got to. Yeah. We're heading toward a break, but um, is there anything else you want to play for us, Tommy? Before we hit that break, or I mean, you've done a great job. Is for there us. something new that you have, yeah. like uh, that you're promoting? Yeah, I don't know what you, I don't know what you where you want us to go with. Uh, well, this, we so. got the uh, the. I can. Kevin and I wrote this. Kevin Can't Cronin stop rocking. Wrote this Can't stop rocking song. New single to promote the tour. Yeah. With Aria Speedwagon sticks. And everybody in both bands played on it. <laughs> I sing the first verse. Kevin sings the second. I'll sing the first verse. Hey now, brother, I can see it in your face. You don't understand how you got into this place. Big shots, taking handouts. Well, guess who pays? Now they're telling us to change our ways So you tighten your belt and dirty your hand Wake up your bling up, let me hand me tune my guitar up <laughs> So you tighten your belt and dirty your hand Wake up your boots and make a stand Raise your fist and be a man Put the pedal to the metal Home. We'll still carry on. You can't stop rocking. 
like that. <laughs> I'm sure. I tried that by myself. Very good. That, that was great, right. man. Thank you. Fucking fantastic. fantastic. And again, TommyShaw.com and also Ticketmaster.com for tickets uh, for Ario Speedwagon Sticks and 38 Special. They start May 13th and they're going through ju uh, July 11th. They're around here June 24th. June 24th at PNC. PNC. If you're a rock band, if you play rock band, the video game, this song is available as a download on rock band. Okay. So. Oh, cool. Rock band's a sponsor for our tour. Oh, and, that's uh, a good sponsor to have. It yeah, is. that game might take off. Yeah, that might have some. <laughs> yeah. It's got some potential. Oh, you yeah, know what? Yeah. You know, yeah. something like... interesting is is we we hadn't been on any of those, and I and I'd licensed Renegade to a couple of years ago, and I'm wondering why why is it never on there? <laughs> well, I didn't realize it, but you have to have your original masters because they they split it apart so you can turn up the drums and turn up the lead vocals. All so right. when when we got the sponsorship with Rock Band, they do this new song. We want three of your old songs, and and so. Like, okay, so let's get the original masters. Well, we can't find them. Nobody knows where they are. They're just out there somewhere, They're in somebody's and... basement or, or somewhere. Oh, so, man. so we're about we're about to have a rock band sponsor the tour. We can't. We got nothing on it. So, so we went and re-recorded three of the songs wow, cool. uh, that sound just like the original masters. So they're so. Uh, when you hear them on Ooh. there, that's they're they're brand new recordings of that. Oh, where the good. hell did th those will pop up someday and be like, hey, look what I found. Oh, we someone's we had them. <laughs> yeah, we we thought we had a line on them. The the lady whose husband uh, owned the studio where the stuff was recorded, she said, I've got a bunch of stuff in the basement. N not only yours, but a whole bunch of other bands' stuff. Holy that's been shit! In it for Thirty years, and she's and she. But before she gave the stuff up, she said, I really need to be paid for the storage of this stuff for thirty years. And so, you know, trying to get a corporation to do that, uh, they finally figured it out like the day before the debt, you know, a couple of few days before the deadline and our stuff wasn't in there. So, oh, so you guys paid her storage and it wasn't even in there. No, the, uh, Universal had to work out a deal with her. Yeah, uh, they got a bunch of stuff back, but it wasn't in there. All right, Sean Cassidy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> William Shatner's original solo work. <laughs> <laughs> awful stuff. Oh yeah, the worst stuff ever. <laughs> Let's get uh, Tommy Shaw out of here. That was great. Hey, thanks Tommy. so much thanks for, for playing, too. Guys. We'd great. love to have oh, you come thanks, back man. and play some more for us. Absolutely. We're gonna take a quick break. We got Colin Quinn coming in next. Yes. All right. And the Bill new Burr Svelte Colin Quinn has been hanging out with us. He's playing Caroline Star. Starting tomorrow night, get his tickets, 212-757-4100. Opie and Anthony, mm, mm, I just want to say, before we uh, start talking to Colin Quinn, how great was Tommy Shaw? Phenomenal. Motherfucker. Really good, man. And I by the like way, an asshole. Why were you feeling like an because asshole? Because I, I, I've done nothing but trash that band forever, and then he comes on and he's fucking awesome. I was I, I got to say, I was a big Sticks fan uh, growing up. I forgot. I know. You know what it was? Actually, I liked the earlier stuff. Absolutely, the earlier that, stuff. That, it's more like that later stuff. It was uh, the, uh, Mr. Roboto was uh, a good song I for like, like song. for like a guilty pleasure, like a like like a goof. I hate to say that, but too much time. Oh, go! But too much time on my hands is when <laughs> the band lost me with all that. <laughs> that lady, babe, all that. I, I couldn't. I couldn't stand it. So then I felt like an asshole. Yeah, but you got to go a little deeper, like uh, castles. What was that castle song? Castles and. Uh, uh, Castles in the Sands. Uh, that's yeah, uh, believe me. I wanted to say that, but I was afraid I it would be wrong. I, 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 it's right. Castles. Uh, castles in uh, the sky. Castles. <laughs> There's only finding whatever places they have castles. All castles in oh, that guy was, uh, He was great. He was great. That's what we're getting at. I'm, we just, I'm trying to mind? throw some sticks knowledge. Oh, who gives a shit? Even if I had it, he was just telling me some vocal tricks about uh, what. Just about like your voice and me, 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 me. He yeah, said that he you had to warm up. Really fucking good, man. Yeah, yeah. At this hour, to be able to pull that off. Guy was hitting those high notes. He had some nice, like, rasp to his voice, yeah. too, and shit when he, he wanted just cool. to. And I told and he was a good interview. And he I told Dan, why didn't we think about that years ago where you get these guys just to play a piece of a song? Because then you get a lot more songs out of it. Yeah, you get, like, a verse and then a chorus, another verse, and then you're done. Usually a so lesson hey, like that comes in. They play uh, an old classic and then their new song, and that's it. Time you got go. four or five songs out of them. Yeah, yeah it's great. Say to everybody that comes in, hey, do your fucking greatest hits for us. <laughs> yeah, come on. Montage <laughs> like your that. hits. Go. All right, Colin Quinn <laughs> lost a lot of weight. Yeah, I told you. 40 pounds, I'm guessing. Yeah, I'd say 40. Wow. Maybe 50. Jesus. Maybe 50. Maybe 50. Are you shitting me? 50? Yeah. Is it depression or are you no, actually trying the to do something? Way. The AIDS. I like the way he says it. it's pressure actually trying to do something. I'm actually trying to do something. <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk about Billy's. All right, I'm sorry, Colin. No, I. that's exactly right. That's a legitimate question. 
But I'm trying to do something. That's what it is. No, you're doing oh, yeah. something good. A one-man show, my friend. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's called good. My Two Cents. Mm -hmm. It's about the economy, but it's not boring, I swear to God. Where is it? <laughs> At the Roy Arias Theater on West 43rd Street, starting next week for two weeks. That's fucking cool. I'd like an advanced ticket. I would like to see that Everybody show. Everybody pays. I produce it myself. <laughs> you cheers a lot. I didn't say I wouldn't pay. <laughs> Everybody pays. <laughs> what, what an asshole. I know. We're trying to be nice as Everybody guy. pays. This son of a bitch goes, I'd like an advanced ticket. support the guy. Do you remember who was supporting you when you were sad? That's Your right. Your friends, Opie and Anthony. Yes, of course. But So look, give us a free ticket. You don't want a free ticket. Everybody pays. <laughs> Everybody I fucking pays. laid out 15 grand for this goddamn thing. I'm what is you, you, what is you appreciate it more when you what pay a, for it. What a shit Thank thing. You, then Andy. you're like, you now I've paid for You want to be those showbiz guys that have money but don't pay for shitty little shows? It's yes. 40 bucks. You won't even notice it. How All about right. half price? <laughs> Give me half price. I want to sell I want to Give sit next to Jerry. One. So we feel like we're getting something. Two for yeah. one. Jerry. I right, think you can sit next to Jerry. Where's right. the premiere? I'll pay for I'll it. I'll give you a plug. Of all the nerve, this son of a bitch, <laughs> I told you, I caught him years ago selling his CDs, and if he autographed them, it was an extra 10 bucks. <laughs> oh, Me? Fuck. No. Yeah. Did you Never. ever do that, Jimmy? My Never. friend from Dallas said he swears by it. Y your friend from Dallas? Who? What fucking <laughs> friend from idiot? Dallas. Who's asshole fucking from Oswald? What asshole from Dallas? <laughs> he was it's fucking Clay Bertrand. <laughs> <laughs> Some male prostitute. That fucking... <laughs> that fucking <laughs> Uh, by the way, because uh, people can't move on, the, the song was. I do have a lovely uh, <laughs> sorry. table. The, the song was Castle Walls, so now we can finally move on from that dumb oh, castle song. No, I never charged for an autograph. I, I didn't like Billy Burr's posture during the song. He was slumped over like. Was he trying like to be yeah. fucking Renaissance Did I not king? explain myself? I just no, no, felt it. like I, no, 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 I, said, no, I said it on air. I said I felt you like know. an asshole because not only have I trashed and made fun of that band, I was making fun of it on the way in, and then he comes in, he's fucking awesome, he's a great guy and everything. I was just one of those like, ah, oh, God, I'm a douchebag. You did bag. explain yourself perfectly, but I just wanted to trash you anyway about it. <laughs> I thought it was <laughs> a two quarter for the room I you make fun of my comedy of club t-shirt. I figured you'd go with that. Ugh, the yeah, road hack. Yeah. That is pretty Rough disgusting. Back. Why don't you move the mic closer, Carl? You're fucking leaning into it like a fucking the fact that The fact that uh, Tommy <laughs> Shaw... <laughs> <laughs> the fact that Tommy Shaw knew uh, Jimmy Norton's that material. Hurts. That, that hurts. That, that, little that. Bit, little you knew bit. Jimmy's act? Oh, yeah. He's oh, yeah. like, oh, yeah, yeah. We saw you. We watched your uh, DVD on the bus. On the and... tour bus, yeah. You know how oh, it is. Celebrities recognize each other. What am I going to do? <laughs> what happens? They all know the kid. Uh, we got Jimmy Norton on the video. <laughs> we got <laughs> Dude, <it's easy>. yeah <laughs> that's great we brought uh colin in to promote the one man show but also talk about scorch we found some oh. gold some gold yeah well colin uh big fan of the scorch i love yeah. well, well, it love me about lady diane marion reminded me of the dennis de young <laughs> yes marion's hair marion had the dennis de young hair remember? it was the dennis de young hair she did oh that helmet head <laughs> oh, horrible i really did just want to shove a face mask right in front of it it was like a <laughs> stormtrooper hat hair. Yeah. <laughs> made of dryer lint <laughs> <laughs> fucking awful with a was lisp like, an obese oh, gout <laughs> awful <laughs> gout. gout on her face <laughs> a fucking but fat still, disaster i dare anybody I defy anybody. And at the time, the MTV Music Awards were considered very hip. Was, oh, yeah, yeah. I defy anybody to do anything funnier than these two, bringing those two as their fucking dates. <laughs> and then oh, refused. And, yeah. And the then funniest we were, thing ever. But we refused to interview anyone. Uh, I know. They were like, hi. Remember Dale Earnhardt? They did. Uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. We lost oh, fucking Mick Jr. Jagger walked oh, over, and they God. said hi, and he walked away. <laughs> he walked yeah. away. Management hated us. They didn't get the bit. We're like, no, the bit is we're there, but we're not going to interview nobody. It was nobody. The, the publicity people that kept, like, ushering the people away. Because, uh, like you said, Mick Jagger was coming over, uh, and then the handlers saw Lady Di and Marion <laughs> and just went, oh, no, 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 and, like, would push them away. Like they're, they're they're taking a bullet for him. Or something. Ah, <laughs> it's because that's so great. Is in the middle of this show that at the time thought, and they were like really popular at MTV. It that thinks of itself as the hippest, yeah. fucking beautiful people. Even though they would never say that about themselves, they're too hip to know. Of course, but they thought they were just the, everybody's just dressed and fucking. And to see those two <laughs> wretches of the fucking, as if I can quote the Statue of Liberty, the wretched refuse. Wretched refuse. <laughs> Standing there like all enthusiastic and like, hi. Dale Earnhardt Jr., I'm sorry about your father. I'm sorry about your father. Yelling like, like, what are you wearing or who are you Where wearing? Are you? They're just, I'm sorry to hear about your father, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Come over here, we want to talk to you. Wearing like fucking, oh my God, you didn't wearing like that. Jimmy Buffett in Orlando t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> no, they got their hair done for the thing. Yeah, they got all gussy. 
They went up. to the parlor, Colin. They were all you gussied up. And they got new dresses from, like, uh, Kmart or something. You're forgetting oh, yeah. the fit. The fuck they, they took it very seriously. Crazy. I know. It's the greatest thing of all time. Hey, E-Rock, oh, you got a clip fantastic. of that? Fantastic. We got to find a clip of that. The funniest okay. part of fucking Lady Die with that <laughs> awful hair <laughs> is when, when, they, when they made her fucking paint a little black mustache on herself, and every time she walked in, they played oh, the, 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 the fucking the, the, the Laurel and Hardy music. She looked just <laughs> like him <laughs> with that greasy fucking <laughs> 1920s hairdo she had on. <laughs> that music. Uh, mm, that. Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, now, Marion, we have to ask some questions. <laughs> she's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I was just trying to get Dale Earnhardt Jr. <laughs> He's very upset at you. <laughs> Sorry about your well, father. Now, let me have it. The pie. <laughs> let me have it. And if they ever recover, that's oh. the saddest part is the tragedy. Is that they ended like Edgar Allan Poe <laughs> and like Van Gogh? Their their genius led to madness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lady Di ended up homeless, blowing fucking yeah. men under the train tracks. Yeah. It was wonderful. <laughs> good, good for her. <laughs> exactly. Oh. That's called. Uh, that's pretty much what should have happened. Oh, she should have been found like that oh, fucking nanny in she's Boston. Half of her. <laughs> Would have weighed as much as a regular person, but <laughs> on the dumpster, yeah, old dumpster nanny. <laughs> Just had her, you wanted to see her torso floating in the front. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, did I want to see a police boat fucking gaffing her onto the deck? Yeah, electrical <laughs> tape around her fucking <laughs> <Jesus. laughs> She's all bloated and fucking oh. black or blue. <laughs> That's it. I see fucking diamonds cutting her back. Oh. They photograph a moth, yeah. moth pupa in her throat. Her fucking rotten Wrangler jeans <laughs> stuck to her fat legs. Fat, swollen feet. Go on now. We'll make fun of her now. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take care of her from here. Y'all took her this far. <laughs> uh, oh, was she a parrot head? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and then we got Scorch there, Colin. Yeah, yeah. Well, and we found some gold is, uh, with, with uh, Scorch that we want to play for you. Tell you know, Scorch, Scorch, had a, Scorch has a TV show. Yeah. Yeah, I heard you said, uh, Sam was telling me. Why don't you uh, uh, convey some of your favorite Scorch moments? Well, just oh, any well. kind of when he gets rowdy with any kind of like, you know, hey, today was like midget. I remember just listening. He always had like these great things and they were like, you know, it was like shock jock, 1988 shit, you know. <laughs> Only it was 2000. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was like, hey, today we got midget, naked, wrestler. I mean, it's, you know, do show <laughs> dressing, do show dressing. <laughs> that was a great one. I Is it do show dressing? And Colin was reminding us at the time we had our listeners throw yellow paint on him while he, he was in a He scorched cage. trying to do some good <laughs> He's trying to do some good charity work for animal rights, which everyone agrees with. So he goes in a cage like a dog. And uh, actually, when I was going to visit, I went to the Prospect Park Zoo, tripping on acid. One of the workers there and locked himself in the cage, my friend's brother. And it became like a national story. Meanwhile, he was just tripping. And he locked himself in like, these animals are mistreated, but he's just like tripping, you know? And it became like, hey, this guy's like deep, you know? He's just like, dirty. He's deep. It's like a mescaline down fucking chain smoke. So fun. But Squash did his version of that in Syracuse. So now I heard he's, Sam tells me he's now in Manchester. Man yeah, it's a good market. No, yeah, they they, they call it what again? Manch Vegas. Manch Vegas. Manch Vegas. Why do they call it that? I have no idea. There's no reason for it either. The place sure is the furthest a, thing from Vegas. Just, I'm sure there's a clever uh, reason for that. <laughs> oh my they're just, pun they're, they're just pumping up, uh, punching up the the coolness factor. Just by putting Vegas yeah. on a name like. Well, because yeah. people would think it's like not so much a party town with a name like Manchester, but it is. And so they have to bring it up to Manch Vegas, letting people know, you know, if Las Vegas is a little far, Manch Vegas is right so around the So is there gambling there? Probably not. I don't know. If so are, there, are, there, are there casino, like ho maybe so hotels? Some shiny lights? Big light <laughs> shows? No, it's not like, no, it's not known for that so So it's much. nothing like Vegas. I, I, it's more the spirit. <laughs> the spirit of Vegas. <laughs> the spirit. It has the suffix. <laughs> what's, what's, yeah, what goes on? In, oh, I don't even know the thing anymore. Are we gonna get what happens in Manch Vegas stays, stays in Manch Vegas? Is that because nobody that cares? Is? Yeah, because yeah. no one gives a shit. What happens in Manch Vegas stinks. Story. <laughs> Are we gonna give uh, Colin a little? We're happy to please, please. please. There's I'd one you've got to see it. Do we want to replay the? Uh, well, I say just the part where he's where he's explaining. There's a scene where where Scorch kind of gets a little bit serious, and, and I think that's important. 
I emailed Danny some clips. I think at least at the first part of Danny. the first episode that we already watched. Yeah. And then there's uh, some other clips that show some of the really cool segments that he does on PFG TV. Mm hmm. All right, we're going to get this set up for you. Uh, Colin, let's not forget My Two Cents, a one-man show with Colin Quinn starting next week. When's it start? When, when's the, when's the uh, celebrity premiere? <laughs> yeah, you got one of those? Yeah, when's the start? Wednesday, yeah, yeah, when could Jim walk the carpet? No, Wednesday is what? Just opening Wednesday's night? Wednesday's the opening night, but I mean, that's when the celebrity premiere, that's when if Jerry, I haven't contacted oh. Jerry, but if Jerry comes and, <laughs> and Anthony will get to sit next to his favorite celebrity at my shows, my Aunt Margaret. Hitler. Oh. Uh, Hitler. <laughs> Hitler. Hitler. <laughs> Hey, it was Hitler's birthday last week. Yes, it was. And we're sitting there, and there's what, this writer for Anthony Giselnik's writing for Jimmy Fallon. He's a comedian. So I stop him, and he's like, Hitler's birthday. I go, you got to have a joke for it. So just then, Norton passes by. And I go, Jim. He, I set it up for him, and he came through like the clutch. I go, Jim. Hey, everybody. Jimmy Fallon, welcome to me. I pretend it was Jimmy. Hitler's birthday is tomorrow, is today. And Jim goes, how can you, you know how hard it is to find a cake with six million candles? <laughs> oh, shit. I did that on the show the Oof. next day. Oof. <laughs> That's a bad one. That was a good job. It is a, a good one, job. but it's Thank one you. of those oof. Yeah. Here it is, his scorch. First of all, just the fact that Anthony said oof. Is it July 1st, Colin, well, your premiere? He must be under some chargers. July 1st, it's May 6th, it's next Wednesday. Yeah, let's get Oh, to we're in, hold on. What are we in now? We're July in May. Yes, it's July 1st. Oh, I say oh. oof to cover up the fact that I had people over and a party on the 20th. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that oop sounds like you know, community it? service oop. Well, <laughs> here it is, here it is, scorch. I, but I said it wasn't a celebration of the man's birthday and stuff. It was more a celebration look of his back as <laughs> it's a look back at the era, uh, you know, and what it took to defeat uh, the fascism and, and, and the Nazis. Right. And, uh, mm -hmm. It's like, you know, it's like uh, 80s night remembrance. at like a nightclub. Lest we forget. 80s night. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like retrospective. Please play some of this for Carl. Yeah, let's yes. go. Here let's we go. go. So, so the setup, Carl, uh, I think we said it, but he does a TV show from a Chinese restaurant on a Tuesday night. Well, what? the Chinese restaurant has since burned to the ground. Yeah, it burned to the ground. But oh, wow. Well, it was can, scorched to the ground. He's trying to do a TV show. There's 20 people in there. You can hear them talking among themselves and ordering food. This is something he does uh, on a, what, weekly basis? Yes, PFG yeah. TV is a weekly a show. A weekly show. He goes out and just look at the subtleties, like the panning of the crowd yeah, okay. and him talking up the crowd. I, like that. I see the pool table in the back already. <laughs> yeah, that's, see? A, that's always the place you get good Chinese food is the pool table <laughs> in the dining room. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Nobody there. No. You see all those transitions, the new shots of the audience? Yeah. Yeah. They're using that like early 80s video design <laughs> technique. Exactly. So every wedding video has that dissolved. Close your shades. Help me. Get the PFG. Is that him? Yeah. yeah. I've yeah. never seen him in person. Wow. <laughs> Stream close up so you don't realize it's one row deep. PFG TV, the TV show. We have got someone is going to spin for the first time ever. The wheel those bags under his eyes. Jesus. Meat. <laughs> the spinning of the wheel of meat. I've heard about the wheel of meat forever. It's amazing. Also, I know the wheel of meat from school. Look at the tarp. That's like he should be covering a boat. <laughs> It's part of his set is a tarp. And special musical guest. Whoa. Kill that feedback. Wait, somebody lower that or something. Good special one. Special musical <laughs> guest, Vegas Temper. Yeah. Good one. I think he walks away. Yes. So before I go any further, I want to talk about a couple of things. Anybody hear about the SWAT team that went through Manchester the other day? No. Yes. 
Nobody, did you hear about that? It happened outside my house. It happened outside my house. <laughs> that that is box, the best. I was out for a walk. All of a sudden, I see these guys dressed. I thought it was Columbine. I see these guys dressed up in full, like uh, a camouflage. All well, you can see is their eyes. And I hear them say, we're going to set up right this here. monologue. The Colin. first thing that came to yeah. my mind was Columbine. Shit, my house is in trouble. I'm probably going to get killed right here. Second thing that came to mind is, uh-oh, maybe it's the DEA. So it's as true, of the like Columbine 30 is after... Well, those outfits, they were those he, he, Yeah, yeah exa outfits. exactly, yeah, and yeah, he thought yeah. it was Columbine, even though, and yeah. I like how he mentioned it, though, earlier, and the guy said, that happened right in front of my house, and, and he ruined, he ruined Scorch's whole bit there, because then he got, because he had to go, no, it happened in front of my house, <laughs> and I don't live near you. No, they both live in the same shitty apartment, apartment complex, <laughs> the formerly singles apartment complex for people trying to get away from that. Formerly <laughs> the, the mad humdrum of Boston, and they moved up to Manchester. Mass Vegas. Right, Mass Vegas. Vegas. Sorry, Sam. <laughs> but he's great. He has, he has like he has no comic timing, <laughs> none or delivery. He has no comic style whatsoever. It's good. He he just agrees with hecklers. He's just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right you're an here. asshole. You're an asshole. <laughs> or whatever repeats house. what they say. It's like a four-year-old. That's my house. It's like <laughs> Columbine. They were dressed uh, like angels, something. <laughs> just like astronauts. <laughs> what? He's the fucking. He's the best. The awful turtleneck. It's like Donald Pleasance. <laughs> fucking horrendous. Pleasance. <laughs> nice tight three minute setup. Oh, it's just abysmal. <laughs> three minute setup with every detail digressing into other it's shit. And what you, what you can't see at home, he's talking with the pointer finger and pinky pointed out like with yes. the devil horns. Like that's that's his move. He gesticulates. Yeah, he, that's his move. Mm -hmm. Please please hear more. I want to hear the punchline. Or like an hour ago, I was actually still pulling balloons full of crap out of like my backyard because my stash was gone because I ain't gonna get in trouble yet. Yeah. How many people enjoy right a good on. stash? Anybody that enjoy a good stash? Yeah. Give yeah. it up for your white stash. <laughs> that was the joke. How many enjoy a good? St oh, it was that he was afraid they were gonna steal his drugs. Steal his drugs. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the kind of entertainment you get it there in Manch Vegas. Yeah. PFG TV, the TV show. That's right. Good. More. <laughs> what else was going on, man? I mean, like, I was talking, me and Nick were talking about this, about the whole Elvis thing. Why, whatever happened, like, why is so cool about Elvis, you know? Sure. Why is there no, why doesn't Charles Nelson Riley ever get seen at a 7 Eleven? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll, I'll, take a, I'll take a burrito in a hot show magazine. Oh, this is going <laughs> true. You know what I mean? What, what's up with that? Why is it always Elvis? Elvis? I'm not a fan of Elvis. I love Charles Nelson Riley. Not that way. <laughs> uh, he might have liked uh, him, but not that way. Uh, I got it. I get it. Colin, you like this? He's, um... Yes. <laughs> and who's who's been I love this actually. who's been talking about an Elvis sighting in the last fifteen no one, years? No one. I mean, that, <laughs> I just love it. Hey, you see Elvis uh, at Seven Eleven? No one ever sees Charles Nelson <laughs> Riley. <laughs> he just barrels through the setup punch right to the next <laughs> oh, thing. Yeah. And I love Charles Nelson Riley, not that way, but you know he's a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like what the fuck? It's just, he has like fucking Star Search concepts for setups. <laughs> 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 Horrible. Oh, he's atrocious. <laughs> but it's good. he is correct. <laughs> no one doubts his facts, or no one doubts the historical accuracy of his right. material. Yeah. He is correct. A little more score. <laughs> so anyway, we got a great night of score tonight, you know what I mean? Because uh, I want to introduce uh, Nick and Jolanda. He has the worst crew ever. And this is our favorite part, part of tonight. We have a PFG disciple that is the ultimate in PFG disciples. Where is Brian? Is Brian out there? PFG disciple, they're Brian. called. Because yeah. Brian disciples. did something that, honest to God, my mother would t not only take me out of her will, but she would never have sex with me again if I did. If I did what Brian did. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. That is PFG to me. Okay. Oh my, oh my God! God. Have <laughs> yeah, that's what we said. Have he tattooed my, my PFG on seat. his arm. <laughs> because what I want to start talking oh. about today. All right, stop this. Just the same. Uh, Brian. Score. First Rock of all, his Collins. fucking his partner next to him, Mr. Fucking Dazzo from Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, either that or it looks like uh, Clemenza uh, in the in two when he went to steal the rug. <laughs>
Scorch is about ready to tell everyone why he does PFG TV, Colin. Yeah. Oh. And then he uh, asked the same question to his staff. To his staff. It's just good, good to watch him get serious. I think they're shooting this in that same ball where Nicole Kidman killed Matt Dillon in that movie. <laughs> you know, when it's like, uh, she kills her husband, what's it called? I don't know. Did die for? Yes. Eyes wide shut. Oh. Oh, yeah. She kills Matt Dillon. <laughs> Oh, we're well, not going to play anymore? Yeah, play it. <laughs> we we, we, <laughs> we should. Like, help me. <laughs> uh, a, great, a great question to me the other day. Great. Uh, great Brian question. said, why do you do what you do, and why do you love doing uh, what you do? Uh, so I want to answer the question. I want to give everybody here the chance to answer your question. I love doing what I do. It's going to sound really hokey and gay, but you know what? And I want you guys to turn around. I love doing what I do. <laughs> hey, hold on, guys. hold on. Hold on, please. <laughs> He goes, it's going to sound hokey. And I want you to turn around. See, because at this point, they are all at the bar facing away from him. <laughs> no shit. And, and he's going to tell them why he does what he does. And this is very sincere. And he wants them to, t he has to actually ask them to turn around. I want to put a beer on. They're ordering on. shots. Please, oh. everybody, if you could just give a shit for a minute. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. I want to put a beard on Bob Kelly. I want this to be fucking Bob. <laughs> right there. Uh, I want to give everybody here the chance to answer your question. I love doing what I do. It's going to sound really hokey and gay, but you know what? And I want you guys to turn around. I love doing what I do because of you guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I said I love doing what I do because of you guys. <laughs> when I was a little kid, I was a little fat, picked on little kid. You know what I mean? And uh, now, uh, I would like to say that I've seen some of the people I've gone to school with, and you know what? <laughs> I'm looking good. People look at me. I'm looking good. I'm feeling good. I got these fat slobs that I went to school with. Has anybody noticed that? The girls you go to school with that were hot are now fat slobs. Yeah. Anyone's right? picking on you? You were right, Rupert. <laughs> and we were wrong. <laughs> What's funny is though is he's, he's acting like he's a success now, like like almost like here I sit at the at the zenith of the career. It's like yes. he's in a fucking a Chinese um, yeah. place with a tarp behind him, mm -hmm. bombing. I was your high school principal, <laughs> Rupert. I like how he's sitting down like he's Cosby. Yeah, like he's, yeah. Like he's earned that. It's just all I, I can smooth. even sit down and suck. <laughs> <laughs> he gets up, he approaches the camera. It's like interactive. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that rot, that fucking rotten crew of his. I can't <laughs> stop looking at them. I know. That's the, the worst supporting cast ever. <laughs> he's horrible. But he is dressed like the young Vito Corleone, right? <laughs> yes. That's how Vito was dressed. As a little... <laughs> yeah, the little mustache. <laughs> his fucking partners are just complete asses. <laughs> I do what I do because of you. Well, let's not forget, Sam was one of his partners at one point. That's true. It's, if I hadn't come here, I could have been you, on. You'd PFG have been right TV. there. You'd have been would've... sitting right there in this video. I Big spend... TV star in Manchester. Yeah, but you wouldn't have paid your dues. You would have taken it for granted. And now Sam, you up. Sam, why do you do what you do? <laughs> <laughs> what would you have answered? Turn around. Uh, coincidentally enough, the same reason as Scorch for the people. Yeah. For all the... For yeah, the for the people. I mean, I got for the people. Yeah. By the way, I feel very yeah. sad that uh, my last appearance when I forced with David to do a Hebrew sports. Apparently, that was the <laughs> finish of his career. <laughs> that was it. I go, David, still doing Hebrew news? No, I'm not doing anything. Last time they don't like me anymore. He, well, now he he had a catchphrase kind of a thing where he would go like, whoa, whoa, and and now he can't good, even do it right. That's a good catchphrase. It's a sure great is. catchphrase. He just went like, whoa. whoa, he was so shocked. He would go like, whoa, whoa. And now it's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, all right. Is we it like it. a Joey Lawrence kind of thing? Yeah. Whoa. Yes. Now he's way over the top with it now. But that, and, what, yeah. I think that's, you know. Yeah, he ruined it for himself. <laughs> 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 all right, let's uh, find out why the rest of the guys. Yeah, yeah, please. Please. Yeah, please. Yeah, please. Fatter slobs and now fatter slobs. Nobody's gotten better but you. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, I love doing what I do. That's identifiable material. No one's gotten see. better except for you. That shows a man who's really done some insightful uh, soul searching in his life. As he sits in the Chinese no restaurant. No one's done better than me except for you. They're all fat slobs. My life ends like that. It's perfect. It's fucking home video. And he always ends with, yeah. They screwed me, and now I'm better than them. But if, uh, if my this, life inside is over. If this is his better, what was he before? I yes. know. Just like a lump of shit. We could get, uh, hang out the windows and spit on people as they walk by and go, hey, suckers, how does it feel? 
fucking Rupert. <laughs> he used to pick on because he used to actually draw that beard on in second grade and wear that turtleneck. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, first hand reaction of the people. I love to be able to be me. I like to get paid to be me. However, little or about, you know, a, a lot we get paid, I enjoy a paycheck to be me. Oh. I like making a living out of having fun. You know what I mean? There's, how many people in there have fun at their jobs? Yeah, you know? They all say yeah, yeah but they're not supposed to be clapping no, at that. No, he's like, no, guys, you're not supposed to. <laughs> yes, I'm having fun at my job and I'm getting paid. How many people actually get to do that? Yeah. And everyone claps and it's like, well, it kind of shoots my little fucking yeah, they're speech all trained to shit. That when you say, how many people here? And let's right, be honest, right. <laughs> I can speak for myself and these two creep comedians. Whenever you're watching this, a little body gut is like, how many times have I been in that fucking bar <laughs> yeah. trying to make 30 people turn around and listen to my fucking shit? <laughs> yeah, Bill Rick and 99s. <laughs> they, just hear, hear, they just hear like, how many people, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. I, I, bet, I, blah, blah, blah. I bet that's what Hitler was saying, in, just in German. That's yeah, how he got yeah. him to come around. How, how many people hate Jews? Yes. Yeah, 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 what did he say? Yeah, how, how many this? people Give me another Stein of beer. No, how many people can't figure out why the economy in Germany keeps fucking up every time? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How many people are so hungry and it's like, it seems like one group of people, I don't know, is doing good. <laughs> yeah, Heil. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I'm with you, bro. <laughs> Please, more. We here have a lot of great time. So, uh, the bottom line is, I like uh, doing what I do. And once again, this is going to sound really hokey because what I do to me is PFG. So, let's hear it for us. Yeah! Now, what I want to do is, I want to ask Nick, and I want to pass it on. Nick Carpinelli, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh -huh. What are we supposed to do when I say, ladies and gentlemen, Nick Carpinelli? You say, what? There you go. Oh, what did they so say? Hi, Nick? Yeah. Hi, Hi, Nick. Nick. That's clever. That's something different. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are awesome. Uh, the reason I do what I do is... I know he said something about being hokey and stuff. He looks like Voss. Got... Yeah. <laughs> he has no idea, he too. Like he's, he's like Voss if Voss were more insightful. <laughs> <laughs> Two kids, they're teenagers, and I just want to be remembered for doing something. Okay, I don't want to be boss. the guy that was, you know, I was, uh, I was cleaning his uh, pool. No, I don't want to be that guy. One of my kids be hey, a pool dad. cleaner asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I would be exactly. Isolate half the audience. How many pool cleaners are out there? I just want, I just want to be remembered for doing something. Something. <laughs> and this and this is what he considers being remembered? <laughs> I've got three daughters. And I just want them to look down and go, Daddy was good. <laughs> and I'm dodging her. <laughs> yeah, Voss is fucking Voss is vain reaching for a poignant moment. It's in fucking it's humiliating to watch. <laughs> Not one poignant act in fifty two years. It's been fucking just non uh, meaningless nonsense on top of itself. <laughs> on top of it. I tell you my favorite point uh, I think it was either on the show or he called in that day after nine eleven he goes I was on the Jersey, of course, he was on the Jersey side where he fucking belonged. <laughs> and he's like, I was on the Jersey side, and my daughter's go, what happened, Daddy? Well, this is probably made up, too, by that fool. <laughs> and I go, honey, girls, there are some people that just don't like us. Oh, because that was the yes, extent. he called in the show and said, uh, I heard no, one I here. You. That was the extent uh, of his knowledge. I wouldn't have been <laughs> listening anyway. That was all he knew. <laughs> <laughs> what are they, Daddy? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but it's been two years afterwards. I still, I'm not sure who it was. It yeah. might be Indonesian. Who knows? <laughs> He's I coming in tomorrow. Oh, is he? Uh, yeah, boss will be here. Uh, what a fucking boob. Right, I don't know if we're going to have time to get to the scorched bits. Oh, love well, this. Well, this part is still good. Is this their holiday episode where they felt they needed to give back? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the very special episode? Yeah. Well, this was the first one. Yeah. All right, hit it. Uh, <laughs> I just want my kids to be able to be proud. I want my kids to be able to say, hey, you know what? My dad was Nick Carpinelli from Rock 101, or Nick Carpinelli from The Mill, or Nick Carpinelli from PFG TV. No matter what, I want my kids to be able to say, you know what? My dad was that guy. That's what I want. That's the one That's thing, thing they will say. <laughs> my dad was that guy. <laughs> anybody, play, anybody play in comics this week? Says, uh, just got an email from comics that said the other guy from Opie and Anthony will appear this Thursday. 
No. Yeah, that that's Jim Norton, the other guy from Bobby and Anthony. Yeah, right. <laughs> Are you on comics? No. Nope. That guy. You there all weekend at comics? No. Nope. Oh, that's Not great, at all. Jimmy. Good. <laughs> My dad is Maybe that Bill Burrard is embarrassed to say it. No, he's, got got Caroline. he's got Caroline's. He's got Caroline's. Oh, old school, huh? They sent out a mass email. Who the fuck is promoting their? Appearance? Maybe it's Voss. I was gonna do a spot, um, on, on my friend on my friend's show, but I told him I'm not being announced and don't plug special guests or any of that shit. Well, guess what? They just not did. happening. Now I'm not doing. I'm absolutely not doing oh, the gig. Oh, so it is uh, you. Absolutely. It was. I was gonna do a, uh, just a set like I would do at Why the Comedy the fuck Cellar. Why they do that? Because I asked, I fucking, fucking asked out. them not to do that shit. I would do a twenty-minute set. I was going to go on early like every other fucking comic. Not doing it. Don't you do it for the people? No, I, I told them I will not be advertising because I work <laughs> fucking Caroline's. Let's see where going, all right. We, uh, not happening. We're not going to announce you, but they say the other guy from Open Fucking Anthony? not happening. And mass, I will not be at comics. That's a mass email that just went out. All right, well, good. Oh, I shit. hope people show up. I'm not going. Why don't you go to PFG TV instead? Yeah. Because you can't get booked on there. It's fucking <laughs> way too far in advance. They have Matthew Fox. They have all the best. Why can't they just let you walk out as a nice surprise? Not oh, happening. Jesus. We like the guys. They now. got Sweeney. Fuck them. <laughs> there you go. It was Jimmy, but Jimmy's not going to do it now. All right. Uh, sorry, Jimmy. No, no, dude. I appreciate you I saying just, that. I, it just popped. And the I'm other like, guy from Opie and Anthony. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fucking work a gig like that for fucking like a twenty-five dollar set, like I would do at the cellar. Right. That, that's exactly what I would do. Right. You're just doing someone a favor. They have to pump it up and make it this whole thing. Just let it be a, a thing. Don't uh, don't rattle your iPhone. It was like just that. a set, like any other set. Like it was like yeah. you know my my friend is doing it, and it was like you go on like you know we we do the, you, you do the cellar, you do stand up New York, yeah. or you do any other culture. Yeah. All right, sorry. Back I heard you were going to do props that night too. I was. I had a whole bunch of them. I had a I had, I, I had a black <laughs> penis and a white penis, and I was going to put them both in front of me and go ah. <laughs> <laughs> That would probably kill. That would probably <laughs> would. Yeah, yeah. would. Tell you. That would kill. Be honest with you. <laughs> All right, back to PFG. A little more scorch. And for those that don't know, Nick was my very first intern at Rock 101 in wow. like 1980. Oh, poor Sam. Yeah, Sam. So, uh, so me and Nick have had a past. Cholanda, the girl Wanda. Why do you do what you do and why do you love it so much? Well, Scorch, when is your birthday? I do it for all the cops. Okay. <laughs> so my birthday is, it is. My birthday is September 10th. Right, and when I first talked to Scorch, it was when everything he just said, I feel the same way. Wow. I think that people have to tell me, like, wow, you're so comfortable in front of a crowd. But it's more like, I just like to have a good time. Where's the crowd? Exactly. Let's do it. She means she's comfortable on the no, bottom of the crowd. She's like a fucking groupie from the 70s. But thanks. I'm comfortable with like a bass player and a drummer <laughs> shitting in my mouth at the same time. <laughs> I could be dressed way sluttier right now, and I'm not. I have so, pictures. I'll show you. Actually, their man is here. He has pictures too. We traded. Um, oh, and our favorite so, Scott Shannon and Stephen um, King's. So uh... I just have a really good time. I love leading the good time Shut and up. rock on, rock out. I'm so Aren't glad you guys are like... here tonight. We're gonna have a blast, and we're always gonna have a blast on PFG TV. Thank you. Yeah. She's on, her last appearance was on Intervention as a meth addict <laughs> at the family. <laughs> How can they seriously say something like that PFG TV thing and and take it like? Why aren't you this supposed to seriously? like have like a history, build a following, and then look yeah, back? Yeah, before you, don't you start, can do this, you, you know, start with a retrospective. You don't start with a look back. You know, I remember the first time I saw Scorch walk out with the mic three minutes ago. It was a magic moment. <laughs> Didn't you read the he article? Did his Charles Nelson Riley bit, his signature. <laughs> uh, more info on the comics gig, because I see Jimmy's steam. I, I can't I to, fucking tell you how angry I, I am. I try oh. to calm you down. Now they're saying it might be Voss, because Voss is doing the gig. So maybe he's being promoted as the other guy from Opie and Anthony. No, it's not. They would just say his name. They would no, say they Voss. Would say Rich Voss. All right. Well, I'm trying to help you out, because I see that. Look at how pissed he is. They would say, first of all, if it was Voss, they'd say, Rich Voss. <laughs> and then a minute later, after the pause of uncomprehension, the other guy from <laughs> Opie and Anthony. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rich will be in here tomorrow with Bill Burr and the Iron Sheik. Yes. That's great. I didn't okay, shake. Can we please not piss him off? Because I really wanted to meet uh, Roddy Rowdy Piper. Do you really? Roddy Rowdy Piper. Those yes. Are, that, yes. Any, any or Rowdy Rowdy. <laughs> Rowdy. Whatever Rowdy. the hell his name Whatever, is. Yeah. <laughs> Rowdy, Rowdy. <laughs> Rowdy Rowdy. Rowdy Rowdy. Who knows? Like the, the dream is. Dusty American Roads? <laughs> <laughs>
I don't know what his fucking name is. I want whatever. <laughs> Roddy Rowdy. Rats or, rats or Rizzo Piper. What? <laughs> Call me Rowdy Roddy in my own goddamn house, would you? <laughs> <laughs> you used to arrest stop wasn't on the schedule. <laughs> well, Jim, I don't blame you for being pissed off about that. I think people should protest the way you were treated by coming to Gotham Comedy Club this weekend. Ah. I'm, yeah, I agree. Are, are you performing there? Yes, I am. It's funny, I did see your name on the marquee. I think that's mm. where everyone should go this weekend to see uh, Colin Quinn, as opposed to actually going to see his theater show. If this fucking dumbbell is plugging eight things in a row in the same city, I don't know who the fuck he thinks he is, but apparently <laughs> Colin's doing everything. Paramount Theater, fucking Gotham, you want to see his one-man show? You're right, Jim. If anyone could learn restraint of promotion, I guess I learned from you, you <laughs> cocksucking whore. <laughs> The fucking balls of him. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get through an episode of this show without him naming his shitty What's fucking an episode. episode? <laughs> He's <laughs> fucking old lady, shut up. <laughs> fucking episode. Wow. Episode of my program. <laughs> yeah, this goddamn podcast. <laughs> you make it sound very important. We're, we do episodes. I like that. Yeah, Collins in Gotham Friday and Saturday. <laughs> uh, let me watch you, my stories. Leave me alone. I don't like your new. I don't like your grace. <laughs> I'll tell you. Well, how. seriously, Collins on Friday. Well, I, gotta, fuck uh, I want. I want to plug it. Because this we way, don't want your charitable well, shitty attitude. While we're <laughs> while we're jumping on Colin, I'll all tell jokes aside, Colin well, is a guy. Yeah, you're right. That I should be. While we're jumping on Colin, I'll, I'll tell you why I hate Colin. Uh, Colin, you make it very hard for people to see you. Tickets, why? Tickets online. Ready for this, people? Oh. www.brownpapertickets.com. That's good so far. Slash event slash six three one one two. No, just go. Oh, oh, fuck it. Go to that. Go to Colin Quinn. Quinn dot com. You buy tickets. Oh, okay. All right, that's easy. Well, why isn't that on your little thing? Because he's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> why isn't that? Uh, you got to remember numbers and stuff. I know. I know. And backslashes. I know. Forget about that. We don't one. need backslashes. That was pretty. Oh, that was pretty now. crazy. All right. Sorry, it's just on the promotional flyer. Don't worry about it. Okay, no big deal, right? I'm sorry, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> Bill's right. A <laughs> little more scores. just happened to oh. run into Colin. More can info. Tell you the easier website to no. go to. More, more info. <laughs> more, info. <laughs> more info on the comics gig. Now Matt Theo is just, well, he writes, the email also said, the other guy from Opie and Anthony that was also in Lucky Louie and Down and Dirty. No, I don't believe he's such bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not Louis C.K. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> PFG? Do they yeah. really, they really did say the other guy from Opie Anthony though? According to Matt Theo, yes. That's the only confirmation we have on it is Matt Theo. Uh, a couple other guys. I think I get that in my corporate. I, I can go run check. Can we look at it because yeah. you know I don't, I'm not going to fucking bash the club. It's annoying. We like comics. Yeah, it's just I don't like they did the death. They're probably just excited mm -hmm. that they're going to have. Nah, man, they they knew better. I I asked him not to promote it, not to mention special. Just just one of many acts. No one cares. People going for a show. I'm just doing yes. a set. Yes. Yeah. Uh, PFG. Jeff Lawrence, who me and Jeff met, now uh, Nick had a barbecue at his house. I was like, you're Jeff Lawrence. I've heard of you. You might I think it was at Nick's call. In his house. Yeah, it was at Nick's house. It's going to be a good like, story. Been a Maybe yeah. Not much longer than me. With mesh t shirts. Sure it was. <laughs> tell us, you remember oh. that? Yeah, so, uh, Jeff, tell us why you love doing yes. what you love to do. Uh, basically, because I hate manual labor, but good for you. Yeah. Uh, no, Seriously. It's, it's something I've done for like 40 years now, and it's just, you know, when I, when I went to divorce, get divorced, when I, 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 told, I told the judge, basically, I'm a maverick and an oddball and unemployed doing anything else so this is what I do and I enjoy doing it and I do it because it's it's like uh, being a kid all the time and you never get old doing this and that's why I do it I do it because everybody seems to have a good time when you have these kind of things going on so I hope you enjoy yourself Fuck it. Do you know how long he was wow. working for that applause? He oh, kept putting that wow. hand out like in. Yeah, something that you guys were to. <laughs> he was something going, positive. Yeah, yeah. He was going for the save. Like, just yeah. start clapping and all hey, He's up. a maverick, though. <laughs> you know? Well, that's what the judge told him during his divorce. You know, I'm maverick, I'm crazy, I'm, oh, I'm wild. I'm, <laughs> yeah. What are two characters? Fucking... Now, we can't do Wheel of Me because we did that already. Right. Yeah. Uh, Colin, are you done with the PFG? You want to see one of his bits? No, that was good. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, Scott, Colin, you didn't like my charitable. You, sorry, you didn't like my charitable. I didn't like your <laughs> graciousness. We were like, okay, guys, back to professionalism. <laughs> because I'll tell you why I didn't like it. Because it was also, not only was it charitable and condescending to me, but it was also self-serving because you're like, I have to make sure I get my plugs in, so let's cut the shit. 
No, I didn't need to plug myself. Shush, not today. I know. In the plug future. Who you cares? In the future. My Letterman Friday? Who gives a shit? I don't. That's their business. Let Dave run it when he wants. <laughs> yeah, me and Kiefer Sutherland. Blah, blah, blah. That's the <laughs> fucking thing to me, Carl. Been did there, done shoot, that. Did you shoot it already? I yeah, shot it Monday. You know, uh, my, the reason my, one of my emails is Fat Kiefer is because one day Bob Kelly said I looked like a Fat Kiefer Sutherland. <laughs> and he goes, what's the name of your show? 224. That's funny. <laughs> that was pretty damn funny. That is really good. <laughs> I wonder who said that to Bob first. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we we got to get out of here. Yeah, look at the time. I got a tank on. Sake. For Christ's sake. Mm -hmm. Can't somebody trash? Look, either mm -hmm. before we leave, somebody either trash his voice, or I want Anthony to do Tony Danza. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a hell of a story. How about story. Tony Danza I trashing calm, boss? I want it to be like, a, <laughs> yeah. I want it to be like, all right, how about Tony Danza, you know, <laughs> or voice as Tony Danza? Yeah, how about Tony Danza as voice? He used to do Bob the Kelly dice. It was the funniest Tony shit Danza, ever. Danza. So he did Bob Kelly voice. dice. Oh, Jesus. Oh, wow. <laughs> Dude! Wow. You do. <laughs> well, yeah, but yeah. dice, anything dice is. Yeah. You know, that works. All right, forget it. Religious dice. Colin, how about Vi Dice's Dan voice? I haven't done Danza in fucking since he was All on right, TV. Dude, how about Dice voice? Oh. Colin, just, Colin has to be out of here for another. Who are you being uh, interviewed by next? Sonny Fox. Pe that your people are getting panicky out. You have people oh, now? No, they weren't. You usually just come working around. on the one man show with me. You Colin, got, I want to go. got people now, Colin. They're working on the show with me. You come in here with uh, your pajamas on, and now you got people. What's going on with you? They're working on the show with me, the girls, Rosie and Claire. I'm hoping Claire. after the premiere, Colin will be going to eat, and Jerry will be going to eat, and Jerry will go, hey, why don't you come? I'm like, all right. Oh. I'm not doing nothing. Why not? I love the fact that Jim is, <laughs> was so proud that Jerry sort of knew his name. But it really had to be. Jim had to date rape him for like a year. So just, oh, Jim. <laughs> no, I never, never. Oh, he called you James or something. Remember, he calls. No, he called me Nortone. That's what they used to call me in high school. I don't know where he got that from. But Nortone. Yeah, that's what they call me. That's what somebody would call somebody if they want to keep distance from him. Nortone. Hey, Nortone. No, that's an affectionate term. Then, One celebrity greeting. Wait, it. I'll tell you what it is. It's a guy that's not sure he has the right name. So he says no tone. So that way, if he's wrong, he's like, "No, my name is Nortinsky or whatever his name." <laughs> 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 oh, it's probably the that's, damn that's truth. <laughs> uh, I don't like it. Well, this is the deal. I got the flyer in front of me. My two cents with Colin Quinn, comedian Colin Quinn's one-man play takes a funny and profound look at the crumbling of the American Empire. Yes. And with his watchful <laughs> oh. eye, examines the new chapter our country is entering. I hope a fucking fire breaks out in the entrance. A oh, profound fuck. look. This no, is Jim, that could injure a lot of people and maybe even kill oh, them. You're right. okay. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Take that back. This is a big day for Colin. Let's yes. be happy for Colin. Highbrow today. comedy delivered with the barroom sensibility. <laughs> 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 right. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that way you cover yourself that you're not going to be a pompous ass. Oh, I say it so the working good. man can God understand damn. it. That's funny. I <laughs> really am a fucking creep. The show starts May 6th here in New York City. Well, the easiest way to get tickets, Colin, because I can't read that website. ColinQuinn.com. All right, ColinQuinn.com. There you go. Very nice. And Bill Burns at Caroline's, a fucking fantastic club on Broadway and 49th, 212-757-4100. Packing it up for six shows. You coming back tomorrow, Bill? Yeah, you are, right? I got nothing better to do. You and Richie Voss? And Iron Sheik. Yeah, maybe we should do a tag yes. team headlining. Oh, bye, guys. Yeah, we should go. I have Thanks, to take a little, That was our out. Old time. That's yeah. That was a good that was You're a good like, what are you doing back there? <laughs> I, feel like I'm watching, I feel like I'm watching obese TV. Oh, you just timing. Oh, you just yelled, waiting on you! Heard it in my headphones Did, he, did they hear that over the uh, loudspeaker? Yes, they, everybody heard it. They heard it on the radio? No. So he just stepped on my fucking bad joke? No, I heard it in my headphones, so I oh, can okay. hear your bad joke. Is uh, that Iraq angry today? You my you joke? No. I'm angry. looking at him in the glass. I said, I feel like I'm watching obese TV. It's like being at fucking. Uh, it's like being at the fucking. Uh, what, what's the water place you go to? Oh this, yeah. To see sea World. Sea World. When you go down the <laughs> yes. stairs to look in in yes. the tank yes. instead of up, up from yes. above. And this as bad really, as episode was when I said episode. How about him going? What's the water place? I don't know. I don't go to vacation places. I'm the too busy creating. Place. What a water child. Place. Yes, the uh, water mommy, place. daddy, I want to go to the water place. <laughs> the water place. We went oh. there last time. Oh please. <laughs> All right. Get the water place off of Modesto. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just counting all the good outs. That would have been a good out, too. Yes, yes. I play with little out. Connor. <laughs> exactly. Or Susan Smith's <laughs> pond garage. <laughs> that would have been another good out right there. <laughs> I'm just counting the good outs. <laughs>